Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Los Angeles 2119. I'm your GM tonight, Eric Kemp, and this is Callisto6. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. So this is a bizarre episode for us because it's pre-recorded. <laughs> Yeah, they were using, uh, they were using the, we got a lot of stage stuff going on, so we decided to go ahead and pre-record this episode of Callisto 6, which actually affords us some pretty cool things to do since it's pre-recorded. It means we get to say hi to ourselves in chat. Hi, Eric. Hi, Lisa. And say hi to, say hi to ourselves in chat. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi, Lisa hey, and everyone. Eric. Sam, stop trolling people. <laughs> hi, Amy. Don't stop. Hey, Bonnie, you owe me money. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not talking to Hector. He knows what he did. <laughs> he knows what he will have done. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Did you say how to do Hi, Tina. Hi. Eric, I'm there. Quick <laughs> reminder, Eric, your appointment is on the 17th. Oh, God. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, that was really annoying when you forgot today. It takes a long time to make those appointments. You mean last week? Ooh, oh, my God, future. yes. I've got a knee injury, you guys. i got a in knee injury at uh, Gen Con. Oh, yeah. Yep. I was just walking up the damn stairs. Ah. That's, you know, last week, oh. a.k.a. Last episode, y'all were joking about yeah. how I look good for a 38-year-old guy, but you don't yeah. know that my body's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's not just age. <laughs> <laughs> you need to work yeah. on that programming. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, before we start things off tonight, I have some announcements. Um, the first one is, of course, we're going to give a big shout-out to Sona. <gasps> Yay! Again. Uh, Sona, so real quick, um, guys, the code SPACE... Uh, use that, and you can get 60-day free trial on Alpha. Um, and check out Sona. It is a really cool series done by Ashley Clements. Um, she, of course, is the one who did uh, the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. She did her own sci-fi series. They built a spaceship in their kitchen. It's nuts. Oh, <laughs> um, awesome. It is pretty crazy. So, and, of course, Ashley, being a huge Star Trek fan, always has my appreciation and adoration <laughs> for that. Very much enough. So yes, um, other news coming out today. I have no information at this particular moment of pre-taping uh, where our merch situation is, but I suspect it's probably on the up and up. You just, know more than we do, probably. It's true. So, hey, chat Eric. Yeah, chat Eric. <laughs> you can answer this question. He's probably saying I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll keep you guys surprised of that. Um, and anything else, of course, that pops up, um, we might just be able to announce it. You know, next episode. I, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Let's see, any other announcements? Fix from last week, I got an extra. That's right, extra. quick fix. We'll go ahead and tell everybody right now before we even start the game tonight that mm. um, uh, rules correction, uh, GM intrusions, you only have to pay one XP to stop a GM intrusion. You just don't get the extra XP because uh, <clears throat> if you spend it, you're denied the XP that you would have been awarded. So good catch on that. Are you already doing the power dance? Jeez. <laughs> You are power hungry. Oh my God! It's gone to your head. You're all drunk with that. With drunk with power. And or beer. I'm, not drunk. I'm just excited. All right. Well, that's good enough for me. Uh, let's go ahead and start tonight's episode of Callisto Six. city explodes there's really just nothing left mm, and that no! happens before or after the sea monster uh i think it was after, i think it was after that. i think the sea monster blew up too okay i think i remember that too as long as that sea monster doesn't oh. get to yeah but i mean the pieces of the sea monster falling out of the sky feed thousands of people oh that's wonderful so that's it is it is a victory. for herbie they were really nice they were mm. I, thought the, I thought they were a monster but you know what a great Kinda episode like a of Callisto 6 this was, guys. Yeah, amazing. Well, that's thanks good. for joining us. <laughs> thanks, for um, thanks for tuning in. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, let's do a recap. Gee, what happened last episode? It's been so long since we played. <laughs> yes, it's been one week. <laughs> Nothing has changed. <laughs> 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 one whole week. <laughs> I, I made a joke. I was like, man, these back-to-back -back games, like, 
I have a deep appreciation for how Ivan does it. And uh, Sax is like, you should have a deep appreciation for how Jackson did it. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, that's a damn good point. (laughs) Man is a machine. (laughs) The Vastronauts are nodding right now. Um, Did y'all do what, like a bunch in a day? Dude, we were like, oh, uh, no, we're just, we'll, uh, just go. Jack- Jackson would not well, stop until the story was told. I mean, that in his defense, six hours were, and so be it. There were a lot of us, and yeah. there was a lot, a lot of you guys. It was, was rough, us, and we like to talk. Yep. Vast. And not go to planets. Vast. <laughs> Never go to planets. <laughs> Hands down, the most ambitious RPG I've yeah. ever seen performed. Yeah. Vast was crazy ambitious, mm-hmm. um, and Jackson is the only person on the planet that could have pulled that thing off. Um, <coughs> I shine bright. Oh God! Does Here we it? Go. No, 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 no. Lucy, go back, go back, go back. Bring back Cass. <laughs> That's not Cass less likely to have help. a fight right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. like, all right, so our <laughs> level-headed. Re- oh yeah, we're gonna do a recap. We recap all the way back to like seasons ago. On <laughs> um, so our recap is last episode. Here's you, how I think I figured it out. Here's oh. how we did the the cakes. If you created a grid of nine as the base level. Then you can have uh, four in the in-between parts of that grid of nine, mm-hmm. right? So that's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then you would have 14. So 14 out of the 15, and that means that Hops would only have to carry one cake. Whereas Cass was balancing 14, 14 out of the 15 without ra- sacrificing any of the structural integrity of each one of those cakes. That's and I ate my cake on the way. <laughs> right, so, so I really, had, I chucked they brought my, 14 yeah, cakes. And I was in 14 funnel cakes, but those are and super greasy. I mean, what's the integrity of the plate is what I'm really questioning. Ah. Depends on the material. Yeah. I'm going to take with paper. Paper. I don't know okay, why. So I also did. saw it very vividly as paper. Me yeah. too. So then we have. Like, I just figured they got that kind of squished. Yeah, we had some structural yeah. breakage, but at least that was the point. And I think it was good. That's the wrap up. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the only stressful thing that happened last week was cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys were making big plans on how to stay laying low and not being <laughs> spotted. Y'all were laying out a nice master plan on how to wipe your identities off of the net <laughs> so that security wasn't going to spot you guys. Y'all had big plans of sneaking around, making sure you didn't get spotted. Hector, are you just going to take a nice phone. big sip of your liquid and think about your uh, secrecy? <laughs> yeah, how did that go mm. for you guys? Well, in last episode, Ugh. everything was panning out. A master plan was being formed with a slight detour for some noms, which, of course, <laughs> led to full-blown freaking emergency. Mm-hmm. A f- an earthquake, one that has not been that, that was actually the strongest earthquake that's happened since Sea Day. Really? What? 6.0 earthquake is the biggest one that LA has experienced wow. for 30 years. Wow. wow. 40 years. 40. 40 years, which is highly unusual. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Los Angeles is used to getting, especially today, modern day Los Angeles, a 6.0, one 6.0 in 40 years is extremely unusual. Yeah. yeah. Um, in this case, it was the largest one that's happened so far. Um, and it just so happened to happen right when you guys were formulating plans on how to lay low. And it may have been... Uh, Positive. May have been able to get away with it still, except Ew. for spotted on the news channel were two younger brothers of Luma's. Apparently, your two young 12-year-old brothers were getting up into some shenanigans, and not too far from Raft City, just north of Raft City, mm-hmm. They had climbed a TV tower, an old TV tower from old Los Angeles, still standing after the great earthquakes 40 years ago, and had joined in a small protest that was happening on top of this tower of 12 people. So moderate, you know, not very big, but on top of the tower, very loud, very visible. Um, Probably trying to get the media's attention, essentially. Of course they were. Um, Firing off fireworks, flare guns, holding up signs. Yeah, they knew what they were doing. And... uh, the adults that were up there saw two 12-year-old kids and handed them a sign. Like, yeah. Um, was any of them from Raft City? What's that? Was any of the people up there from Raft City? We'll get to that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, uh, of course, a vision, as y'all were all approaching, knowing that an earthquake was about to happen, a vision from Oya, who looked into the future, saw impending disaster causing you all to act very quickly and getting yourselves in a position where you could save the people who were on this tower. Because as Oya had seen, the tower was coming down when the earthquake happened. And sure enough, not only did the tower start to come down, but it became a lightning rod of electricity from all these power conduits and cables that had been running underneath this tower for years. Thinking quickly and acting pretty damn heroically, um, 
some crazy stuff went down with Hops, who took a chance that could have cost them their life, not knowing what their powers were capable of. Hops grabbed the TV tower and channeled all those volts, gigavolts of electricity through your body. I gave it a hug. <laughs> and you managed to channel the electricity away from the top of the tower allowing the rest of the team to stage a dramatic rescue with the help of Anton, who stretched his body to the limit, and Cass, as well as Luma, using their quick thinking and strength and dexterity, getting people off, all while being held in place by Lacey, who, through some spectacular piloting, was able to keep things in motion and in, not in motion. You are <laughs> um, Lark Sage. <laughs> and while all of this was happening, there was Oya. Mm -hmm who in the background was actually responsible for playing out the whole scenario like it was on an organ. And when the whole thing was done, it all fell into place, your role in helping everybody save everybody on that tower. The tower came down moments after you rescued everyone on board and you managed to unload them. They all clambered off the ship thanking you, stunned a little shocked, to say the least, at your appearances, the fact that you had done what you had done. Um, the two brothers, of course, staying on board. But of course, the big, the big oh no was the news aircraft that was hovering overhead, filming the entire thing on live television. Where we start today is two days after the event. And you have watched yourselves on TV on a loop for the past 48 hours. However. I went gray. <laughs> there was, uh, there was a stroke of luck. Oh. Because the sheer amount of light coming off <laughs> of hops <sighs> caused a burnout in the lens oh! of a lot of the TV cameras. Not only that, Ow. but the electrical storm was actually wreaking havoc with a lot of their camera equipment and computer systems. And the broadcast was slightly fuzzy. So instead, no one's faces were noticeably recognizable. However, hmm. the images of a man stretched out across from a hovering aircraft and people crawling across it are impossible to miss. Mm. And, and the there's works. a man with a large cybernetic arm who started to give a vague description of the woman that carried him across, and then said, no, I guess I can't remember. Oh. His interview has been cycled over and over. Um, the camera has shown directly down onto Hops, and all you see is a white bleach, like, it's, it just burns out the image. I'm a blonde. It's just a white light. <laughs> there is a moment where you see Hops go hurtling back and slam into the car. Hops, when you watch the footage, it's actually a little nerve wracking to see because when you hit that car, you don't remember leaving the huge dent in the driver's side door or shattering the window. But a day after that happened, your back lets you know that that's exactly what you did. I oh. remember. <laughs> <laughs> Ouchie. <laughs> um, it's really not everyone got out of this scot-free. Um, obviously, Hops, you, you've been nursing a little bit of a lower back pain ever since it happened, right. but more than anybody, Anton, mm. Anton, it feels like you've spent a good four days at the gym straight. Your body is exhausted. <laughs> Sam's grinning. <laughs> Sam's like, I know what that's like. Um, um, Anton, your, your body, even though its elasticity really comes in handy and shrugging off some of the, the aches, the electricity that flowed through your body and the extremes in which you put yourself through and carrying all that weight on your section. The truth of the matter is, is that you are still learning how to keep your body consistent and how to control that elasticity. And in many areas of your body, when you were letting people crawl across you, you overextended few parts of your body. You were, reaching your, you were reaching your maximum limit of how far you could stretch. Yes. The, you, you don't even want to think about what would have happened if you didn't have Lacey, who was so good at keeping that plane oh. steady. <laughs> um, oh, I thought about it. But the terrifying moment, of course, is when Hops was blasted back into the car and you were electrocuted. Yeah. There was a second there where you thought that might have been it. Mm -hmm. um, it's bad enough grabbing a hold of something that's metal while electrical current is flowing through it instinctively causes you to tighten and grip it harder. Mm. 
You were scared. wrapped around it. Yeah. You were coiled around it. Lost control. In a way, in my previous life, I guess, uh, being somebody who practiced yoga and other different martial arts or whatever, but yoga specifically, it, there was a comfort in knowing that you could stretch certain things out. When your body all of a sudden doesn't have a stretching limit, there's this nagging, unsatisfactory, I can't work this kink out. Yeah. I keep oh. I keep stretching my neck around like an owl a couple times until it comes back and I'm like, no, it still, it still hurts, it still hurts. Yeah, essentially what's causing the mm. agony is when the electrical current flowed through you, your muscles tensed, which caused your body to lose some of its elasticity and you are in pain. Okay. It's that sort of like, the only thing you can do is keep stretching. The only yeah. thing you can do is keep kind of shaking it off and doing everything that they do. Mechanically, I went down to two might. Mm. I went from 10 down to two over the course the of that adventure. good news is you're back up to full. Great, mm. but I was feeling that. that you were definitely uh, feeling that. And I would say the pain that you're in now is really sort of an echo of, of <laughs> the agony that you were in the next day. It's been two days, so your body's kind of feeling a little bit back. You, let's put it this way. You've actually recovered a lot faster than you should. After being electrocuted by that tower, stretched out like that, what? you're starting to get an idea of how resilient your body has become. Because even though you do feel that aching sensation from head to toe, the truth of the matter is, is by the hour, you can feel it lessen a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Every time you stretch, it's like a little bit more. Anton theorizes that maybe this could have also given him whatever these powers are, a little bit of a regenerative factor? Possible. Uh, possible, I don't know, maybe. We all really should be dead. Like we all should have died multiple times now. Oh, hell this point. yeah. So, wouldn't surprise me if we have a little bit of that in us. Um, yeah. But we haven't had a chance to really examine ourselves and figure out our limits in different oh. things. Yeah. Like Lacey was asking the other day, so. You got tested. You watched Lacey you watched Lacey pilot that plane without a stick for anybody who was in there, who everybody came back into the in. plane. I saw her. Yeah, Lacey let go and was doing it with their mind. Mm -hmm. And then there's the simple fact that you watched Cass pick a 275 pound man up with one hand, once again, and hold him like a melon coming out of the supermarket and then just sort of crawl across you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, you're kind of responsible, are you okay? Well, what do you feel responsible for? Well, I... I kind of pushed you. What do you mean? To be a bridge and have everybody walk on you, like. Uh, no, 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 no. That's. I electrocuted him. Does yeah. that help? If it's anybody's fault, it's Hops' fault. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you Wait, that's not what I meant, no. though. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I feel great. Let's just make one thing clear. Um, I knew what I was getting into. You could not possibly, by definition, have known what you were getting into. Okay. I don't think any of us. Fair did. point. What I'm yeah. talking about is. I know that what we attempted was risky, there was risk involved, but there were people that needed saving. There were siblings that needed saving, so. Would you say that fine. risk is your business? Risk? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what you mean. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Why would you say that, Eric? That doesn't mean anything to me. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> conversations that take place after this event happened, um, they've been, they've been pretty energized, to say the least. On one hand, these crazy things have happened to you. On the other hand, you stopped 12 people from perishing from the earth, um, including two of your siblings. Um, however, behind the scenes of what a lot of you aren't aware, Hops, this is the third day you have not slept. <gasps> you have not been able to nap. Your body has not stopped going. And while your body feels completely fine, you are starting to- Except for to, the back. Yeah, except bit. for the back. Stretching um, that out, not as well as him. You don't feel drowsiness. Mm -mm. You don't feel your eyes getting heavy at all. The only thing you've started to feel is emotionally drained, mentally drained. Yeah. It's. It's not, I wouldn't say that you have a sinking feeling right now, but um, it's like constant stimuli at this point. I feel like it'll eventually, you know. It might have just been from all the excitement and the, you know, thousands of currents running through my body or something, right? The, the last time you sat down and tried to lean back in a chair to get some sleep, you closed your eyes for all of maybe five seconds, and then they shot open again. 
Um, the rest of you have had to contend with the fact that it's very possible that whoever the hell is responsible for what has happened to you probably was eating some popcorn and watching the news that night. Um, the other thing you're having to contend with is your families, specifically Luma and Lacey. This carried a context. Uh-oh. Now, Lacey was not spotted, and Luma was not spotted. Um, however, when the two of you arrive back in Raft City and meet your families, there is love screaming, for yeah. sure. Um, the dads don't necessarily love scream at you, Lacey, but they are... When you finally arrive at home, you are greeted with hugs that almost knock your chair back. Mm. And they don't say a word, they just hold you. The two of them completely sandwich you. And you only hear Ruben over and over just saying, my baby, my baby, over and over and over and over as he holds you. I'm sorry. Um, Amiko says, we got your letter. What is, what does this mean? We did, it's okay that you didn't, were you hiding from us? Is that why? There was an earthquake. Lacey, you could have been hurt. We don't care if you don't feel like you did good at the expo, it's fine. Nobody did good at the expo, there was a riot. <laughs> I know, but it was just a lot and a lot happened and it, it was too much and... Ruben looks down at you and says, baby, I want you to be honest with me. Did you cause the riot? It was you. Did you cause the riot? Were there too many people trying to get you work? Is that what happened? Hmm. Were they fighting over you? And you, you see, bad thing. <laughs> Amiko just goes, you're gonna be nice to them? And says that with a big smile. And Ruben's like, I'm being very mean right now. Hmm. Okay. They both hug you back. Um, Back at your boat. Hi. <laughs> Come in holding their hands, squeezing Man. them really so tightly. Your mom. We practice. Remember what we rehearsed. Remember what we rehearsed. Your your two brothers were just frozen as yeah. you walked through the door. And when the door opens, your mom sees you and puts down the headset and just goes, Oh my god. And she uh, rushes yeah, over throw them and throws them. her arms around the young boys. Yeah. And then she grabs the Front, front party oh, clothes and jerks you down <laughs> and holds you. And she just whispers in your ear, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I know, I missed I'm gonna, you. I'm going to throw you over the boat. I'm just going to watch you sink. I deserve it, I deserve it. You can do it. Yeah, throw me straight sink. to the bottom. She starts kissing your face. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, Is dad back? Is dad back? Dad's back. <sighs> dad! You hear, is that Luma? Hi. He stomps up the stairs and goes, what the hell? And I know, he just yell at me later. walks over and puts his arms around <laughs> How's you. How's the baby? Is the baby Sophia okay? The baby's fine. Okay. We just got a little wave action. It was fine. No tsunami warnings, no nothing. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's I, okay. I found the boys, though. I found the boys. Did you find Lacey? Yeah, of course. Lacey never left my side. It's okay. It's I'm okay. So sorry. No, it's okay. You're, look, you're an adult. I just want to make sure you're okay. We just didn't know what was happening. We didn't know what you No, were. in emergencies, there's no such thing. We are a unit. That's how it works. It doesn't matter. Well, what Check in first. Keep each other safe. That's what we do. Yes, and what matters most, though, is that you're here now, and you're okay. Okay? Yeah. You're grounded. <laughs> and I'm then you see your mom go, you can't ground her. I, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a happy, grounded adult. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> That's one. Um, I was doing so good. <laughs> um, 
I, I, as I'm as I'm holding them, I can tell that my hands have like I'm looking at my hands and they've turned into my mother's hands for a minute, and I just squeeze them. Squeeze tighter. them out. <sighs> um, yeah. So, uh, when that happens, you you see, uh, you see your one of your little brothers just look at you, just sees your hands and just. Goes, I grab his hand and I give him a wink. Just, like a very angry wink. He nods, he nods. <laughs> Luca nods. And give him a quick smile and then back to <laughs> nestled um, in my dad's chest. Yeah. You're just, oh gosh. Oh. Um, uh, yeah. and, and Marco's holding you as well. And, and yeah, you two, <laughs> the, the whole family holds each other. Yeah. Um, cut to Baldwin Island, where the shouting of a woman can be heard many, many, <laughs> many, many, many rooms away. A spew of love rage coming out of a Puerto Rican mother's mouth. Just, I mean, she's saying sweet things in such a tone. For those who don't understand the language, they would think that someone's life is being threatened. They would think that all hell has broken, that someone had personally offended the family honor. Like, but instead, what's being said is, you know how much I love you, and you know what it means to me when you go running off like this, and they're just like shouting, just shouting, shouting, shouting. Um, the exhaustion well, yeah. that your mother felt, the cold that she was fighting off a few days ago, well, there ain't no sign of that now. <laughs> she is. Oh yeah, she is. She is. Every now and then, she just cuts into like a prayer to the saints, and then comes back at you. With, like, <laughs> just, like, <laughs> she tells you to go upstairs and pray. She's like, I don't care what you have planned for today. Yes, you go upstairs and okay. apologize. See, sí, mommy, lo siento. See. Sí. I can't even look at you right now. Come here. <laughs> and then she does sort of the same thing. She takes her head and thrusts it into her chest, wraps her arms around you, and starts rocking back and forth like she would her baby. I'm sorry, and mommy. I'm okay. She doesn't move. <laughs> Do you want me to still No, go you pray? stay right here. You don't say anything. You just okay. stay right here for a minute. Okay. 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 I'm gonna make some food. Okay. She goes stomping into the kitchen. Um, it snatches an apron angrily off of the top of the refrigerator as she walks over. Um, Eric? You've never, I... hmm? Oh, sorry. What's up? Uh, when, if, at the time that you head to your room, I would like to ask a question. Yeah. If we're not there yet, we're not there yet. Oh, if the time when we what? When you head to your room. Oh, okay, we're there. Oh. So okay. yeah. Can I make a request? Is there a big tree by your window? Are you want to clear us to explain all this? <laughs> Absolutely. So by the time you get to the top of your window, uh, by the time you get to the top of the stairs, as you're closing the door, you, <laughs> the unmistakable figure of Cass, who's already kind of cat crawling into the tree, <laughs> stops. You, you two make eye contact. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I heard that. Oh, I'm sure everybody <laughs> in all of Baldwin Island heard that. Oh my God. Can I come in? Yeah, of course. I open the window. Mom's at work, I left a note. Right there, just again, what? just to clarify, sidebar, for the young people watching, <laughs> Clarissa Explains It All was a show starring Melissa Joan Hart and featured a very inappropriate boy who would just invite himself in. Just put the ladder, yeah. right? Go just, the just crawl into the damn room. No well, what are you doing? Not appropriate. Not Man, appropriate. The 90s, the early 90s. The, yes. 90s, yeah. the 90s taught some some bad lessons. Yes. Yeah. What yes, just did. It did. Was all, she said, "Can I come all in?" All friends yes. of main characters were allowed to walk into <laughs> yeah. your home willy nilly at all hours of the day. And don't yep. even get me started on John Hughes film. Messed <laughs> <laughs> up a whole generation. <laughs> um, watch uh, Zach Morris's trash. Oh God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God, yes. 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 Matt Marisha <laughs> introduced me to that. Oh, isn't it great? I know we're sidebarring right here. I know we're sidebarring right here. Anytime we see something funny now, that's right? a main character who's just like, my goodness. <laughs> I was literally getting ready to leave, and Matt goes, wait, 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 before you go. Have you, have you seen Zach Morris's trash? And Marisha's like, oh my God, have you seen Zach Morris's trash? And I was like, no. 
It's amazing. I was there for two hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Check it out, Brad. It the is. episodes aren't even that long. Watch no. Saved by the Bell and then it's watch great. that show. They didn't no, but they're you welcome to. You don't need to. to. <laughs> 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 it's trash. It's trash. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to bring it back in. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just get really excited about it. Yeah, I, might. I love that show. <laughs> trash. Uh, um, okay, so. Speaking um, of garbage humans. Speaking uh, of. Let's come back. <laughs> let us come back. <laughs> you and I are. Six. <laughs> okay. um, Colin Cross is trash. So, um, <laughs> stepping into the room. Um, <laughs> Cass, one of the things that you've been trying to get used to is that your strength vastly overpowers your body weight. So you're having to be careful of like, when you lift yourself into the window, not to launch yourself. <laughs> um, oh. it's, it's incredibly easy to overcompensate if you're not careful. Wow. And it was super actually, weird climbing that tree, which I've climbed many, many times mm -hmm. and was entirely different. Yes, mm. this was incredibly easy. You could have, you could have just, you could have dangled climb all the way up with just your palms and then swung into the window, no problem. Wow. It's conceivable that you might have been able to jump into the window from the bottom floor. Wow. <laughs> um, so, so, cool. <laughs> so, um, so again, Cass, one of the things that you've been struggling with since all of this happened is you, much like Clark did when he began to realize he was super powerful, he had to start measuring his strength in everything he's done. And I love this room, and it is full of objects that are precious, so I'm a little bit like yeah. long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, you live in a world of cardboard now. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's your world. Even metals, like, that's cardboard. Mm -hmm. And for people watching at home, when Amy and I were talking about Cass, we decided she was somewhere between Jessica Jones and She-Hulk. Wow. So it's kind of that strength level of just like, yes. holy hell. Um, so Cass, you're in the room now. Oya's mother, you can hear downstairs. <laughs> My mother used to do this in real life too. Making sure you hear every dish going in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Making sure you hear the sink turn on and off. <laughs> Making sure you hear um, all of that shit. <laughs> She wants you to know that she's downstairs doing chores and that she's downstairs doing something and you're not. So you hear your mom down there <laughs> making the ruckus. Yeah, that's, it's going to be like this for a little while. So you left a note for your mom, huh? Yeah, she'll get it when she's back. Is she okay? I don't know. I might just put off sort of telling her all the way. You mean like about what happened and like us and stuff? She just thinks I was at the protests. Oh, which yeah. Which is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were there. What now? I don't know, but I can show you something if you want to see it. Can I add something to your narrative here? Sure. Something that all of you in the past few days, because it's been two days now, mm. And you guys have been checking in with each other. Mm -hmm. But something you've all come to realize, spending time apart, is that you're all aware of where the other ones are. That's wow, so creepy and awesome. Like mm -hmm. Think of it like Highlander. You're just kinda, you just kind of know. There's something in the back of your head that lets you know where everybody is. Not the precise location, but a general idea of where they're at. You feel an awareness to the others. Mm -hmm. Um, when Lacey has that emotional moment with their fathers, all of you got a sense that something was happening with Lacey. Everything was okay, mm -hmm. but you got a sense that something was happening with Lacey. Was that at the same time as our? Uh, it was a little before. Okay. But everyone's roughly having the same fam family encounters yeah. right now. Um, so I'm sorry, continue. May I have one quick yeah. clarification? Yeah. Uh, is this happening? Is this kind of like a little? Uh, this like, is kind of a, a, a bookmark between the two days. Thank you. Yeah. I was like, we mm -hmm. weren't gone for two days, right? No. This is this okay. is literally this is literally um, this is what we're playing right this now. These are in. scenes. Yeah. These are scenes that little. happen that are going to lead us okay. up to where we are now. Okay. Great. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I open up a really nice big monitor for her to step into. Um, so here's the lab. Uh, just, Can yeah. Just, some glasses. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, you don't have the contacts. Um, I open a drawer and get my old pair of glasses. You see these round pair of, like, rainbowed style glasses? <laughs> um, 
similar to the ones that you shattered, but much more stylistic. These look like, you know, the old style. The pink like, lenses? Yeah, essentially the ones that your character is wearing in the art. <laughs> Pulls uh, those yeah. out, oh, hands yeah. them to you. Hey. Actually, now that I think about it, you could just have those. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't use them anymore. <sighs> Thanks. I'm, I'm a little bit broke, and I broke those, and I'll be real careful. Mm -hmm. They're yours now, don't worry about it. Okay, just step, you know, right here. How do I look? You look amazing. <laughs> okay, so, and I get in there with her. So I'm okay. just going to guide her through it. I don't remember all the details, but. So, <laughs> sliding it in. Uh, so the moment that you slide those glasses on and they network with her VR rig, you just see, and the glasses, they are much newer than the old ones that you used to have. Um, they sort of like the way noise deafening works when you have headphones on, you can just like noise cancel everything else. This actually has sort of a vision effect, whereas you slide it on, it seems like everything else in the room goes just a little bit darker so you can focus on what you're seeing. Um, and you find yourself standing in what looks like a laboratory. Um, it's right now you can tell that it's in the stage of like crude construction and yet it looks quite detailed and realistic. Um, you see a large room, white walls, white floors, white ceiling. This place looks sterile as hell. And behind you, about 40 feet away, is dual staircases that lead up to a landing where there's a door. And flanking both sides of the door are these long glossed windows that look like they've been shaded a little bit. and various pieces of lab equipment from behind and a control room. In front of you is a huge cylinder that could only be described something looking close to what you might find in a generator room for the particle collider. It is a cylinder that is roughly the size of a school bus, and it looks like it has windows that you can look inside where there is a containment area, and you see the Callisto 6 canister resting inside right where it would be. Detailed just the way, by the way, I think Oya, you still have it, don't you? Sure. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember if it I was think on. You kept it. Yeah, I, I had it on it the ship you. last, so yeah, yeah, sure, I take it. So, um, and that is in perfect detail. It looks like, but it, you see that it's found a slot where it just jams right in and the seal is closed on it. There's no, there's no music, there's no sounds, there's no ambient noise, nothing. This place is completely silent. Um, but you do see on a computer screen the information that Oya can remember of, what's her name? Anika Patel. Anika. 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 Patel. Anika Patel. Oh, Dr. Patel. Dr. Patel. <laughs> Dr. Patel. Yeah. Dr. Patel. Um, I want to add something. Sure. Uh, so I also added a feature where you said there's a window on that school bus size canister. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm it's the it's the, so like think of it as this huge cylinder, mm -hmm. and it has a second inner ring that's made out of metal of some kind, and okay. inside is like it's like this sort of Oculus where it'll open up and you can slide the canister in, and ah. then it takes it into the back of the chamber. Okay. Um, and then between those that inner ring and the outer ring, there is a window. So you can actually physically look inside if you need to. But there so are cameras also. Put something lighting in inside. there with the canister. What's that? So you can put something in there with the canister. Um, or that's where the canister goes. Yeah. It's, so what would happen is, is the Oculus would open, <laughs> and you would slide the canister in, and it would go and take the canister. The Oculus would close, and the canister would then be tractored all the way back to the back of the inside of the chamber and lock in. Okay. My goodness. Um, but there's an detail. empty space. <laughs> There's a chamber that's empty. Mm -hmm. Big empty space. And Probably big enough for a single it. person. Okay. Doesn't look like it's designed to encapsulate a single person, but a person can, to give you an idea of how big it is. Okay. I just, uh, I'm going to be like, um, okay, walk over to that, that big thing. Oh, yeah, big. this is incredible. So we're walking over. And now look, in, look at your reflection. You're Dr. Patel. Because when I was in the vision, when I, when I was, or not vision, but like the memory, I was her, so <laughs> what are you doing? Making her make weird faces. This is awesome. 
I'm glad I put in all that facial articulation. Yeah, how did you do that so quickly? I don't know. It's three days. That's that's kind of that's a lot of time. Sure. <laughs> but this is the place where it happened. Yeah. So I mean, from what I remember from that Kylan Kraus moment, we could play that if you want. Okay. Okay. We gotta walk back over to the table. Is that right? I don't remember where mm -hmm. she was standing. I feel like she was, she was standing here. in front of the chamber. Mm -hmm. Oh, in front of the chamber. Okay. Um, then we don't so, have to so you actually switch to a point of view where you can see this happening in the third person. Um, what makes this particularly eerie for you, Cass, is because there are gaps in the memory. Um, the whole play that moves out in front of you is eerily like marionette puppets as they're moving. So at one second, you see Kylan Kraus approaching, and then he's standing a few feet away. Like, it's a glitch, and, just, and then he's like... Oh, sorry, right that's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> you see P Dr. Patel looking quite frightened and holding it together, and you watch the scene play out. Uh, Kylan being very pleasant to her, making a mention that it's very unfortunate what happened to her wife and they, they want to make sure that that doesn't ever have to happen again. The, the, the I'm sorry to be this player, but I want to remind you, GM, that I have a difficulty with willpower tasks. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, You're doing very good. You did, so so you, you're a very good will player. <laughs> Thanks. I really don't want know, to punch something in your room, but... Let me, let me put it this way. Um, as Cass is watching this, you hear what sounds like leather being stretched, and at first you're not sure where that's coming from. You kind of check the chair, and you stop and realize it's Cass clenching her fist so tight that her skin is literally starting to stretch across her knuckles. Oh my god! And pop. Um, maybe we like, should pause this. Um, <clears throat> inside the inside the VR rig, as you kind of you're kind of hearing it, but um, you hear Kylan speak about the energy source and how. They only have one chance and gives the rundown, then very callously smiles at her and turns and takes a phone call. I am. Um, and then. This whole time, I see the, the fist thing happening. And I just kind of put my hands on Cass's shoulder and just kind of Kay. give Cass, her a squeeze. When her hands come onto your sh her shoulder, do you have a Wolverine moment? Oh, God. Oh, no. Berserker oh, rage. That's what happens this to your hand. This is payback. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is payback. <laughs> oh man, the problem with jumping universes is Karma will follow you. <laughs> do it. I'm Go so for it. No, do it. <laughs> oh shit. I'm gonna die. Don't you dare. Uh, uh, okay. What did you do to her hand? Lost. <laughs> lost. <laughs> Cass <laughs> invested so much in the anger that you're starting to feel. Kylan Krause, if this is truly who he is, and if what he said is a veiled threat, like it seems to be, then the man is a monster on a level not seen on this world for quite some time. And as you're listening to this, you feel something brush up against your shoulder and it could be Kylan. <laughs> I need you to make a roll. Okay. Is um, it, please don't. Please. So this is how this is going to work. We're gonna, so now we're going to actually do straight up. This is straight up PvP rolls. Now, player versus player in Cypher is actually quite easy. It's not going to be easy for poor Oya, but it's <laughs> quite easy. So this is a roll off. You take a d20, and for each skill level that you would have that would cause a difficulty level to drop, you add plus three to your roll. So you have melee, correct? Uh, Do well you the, have... The great thing is actually, because my attacks are unarmed, there's usually one level less of difficulty, but I don't technically have training or skills in those things. Okay. So I usually only drop attacks by one level. So here's what's going to happen, though. I'm going to cancel that because you currently have VR specs on. Mm. So you're basically mm -hmm. swinging blind at this. Great. You're not, you're not really catching visuals. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of that, you're swatting in the direction of Oya. 
Okay. So at this rate, you're actually going to have no bonuses to Great. roll. Is that correct? Yep. Unless Might not do hit. a murder. <laughs> Oya, do you have any unarmed fighting? This is a straight d20 roll, isn't it? Yeah. Unarmed fighting. Do you have any defensive abilities? You Speed have defense. Speed defense yeah. is going to come in Ooh. super handy. Also premonition. I mean, that's a... <laughs> anticipation. Ant thank you. Anticipation. Uh, First action okay. in a round, oh, yeah. yeah. Anticipation works on speed defense rolls. Is that correct? How does that work? Um, anticipation, it says one select point, minus one difficulty for first task in a round. Although I know this is that's not... Really... I'll give it to you. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, Oya is somebody who literally has the ability to manipulate time in, in a yes. small yes. area. You're spidey sensing. Yeah. Spidey. It's a total like... spidey sensing. Mm -hmm. So in the case of like a surprise <laughs> attack here... Um, it, it would be this, if you think about it, like if this is a combat round, the first round of combat, which it technically is, oh. this would be a surprise attack, in which okay. case Oya is going to get a chance a to react to it. So sage. you're going to get a plus six to your roll, but you have to spend one, oh. you have to spend one um, uh, mental point. I have one edge. Yep, it's free. Then you don't have to spend Okay. It. You get it. I get plus six? Plus six, because, nice. because the way this works in a roll off is, is for every everything that would lower your difficulty by one, when you're going up against another player, there's no difficulty level. Oh, right, okay. There's no task difficulty. So the only way you can try to beat each other is by adding. Got and the it. way that works is, is for everyone that would drop by one, you just add plus three to the die. You've got two, so you're adding plus six. Wow. And okay. she's just rolling a straight d20. So go ahead and roll <laughs> your d20s, ladies. Let's, uh, I love you. <laughs> you just did a really good job on this program, and it, he's a real jerk. It would jerk be a shame if something good. happened to it. Oh, oh no. Huh. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, oh. You, you have to go first. Oh, please. I got a 19. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 18. Oh. I thought you got a 20. I was like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your life might have flashed before your eyes. Just now. <laughs> it may have been the two monsters, but I almost had a heart attack. I don't know, Mike. I'm having heart palpitations. <sighs> yeah, zap it. Wow, that narrative of. Uh, of Cass having to watch how strong she is, it just came into play big time. Um, <laughs> Take it easy, Oya, Logan. <laughs> Cass's fist passing quickly through the air has the same sound as probably a large club moving at a good like 60 miles an hour. Like the whooshing sound that it causes when she swings just suddenly up. She does like a back fist. You're not sure how you reacted that fast. You don't remember moving, but you remember seeing the fist coming, and by the right. time you've ducked, the fist started to move. Whoa. So you go. I just got chills. There was a moment where you just realized, she's gonna hit me, and you just calmly went like this to wait to see if it was true. The fist swings right past your head. Oh shit, sorry, Do sorry. I stay low? Uh, yeah, so when you Run, you slip off the away. goggles, you see Oya's squatting right over. Your fist must have just barely missed her head. Oh, shit, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, like, touched you from behind. No, you did a real good job. Uh. Holy shit. I don't know. 18, 19, my God. <laughs> And was that was that before? That would have been eleven your... points of mic no, damage. No, that was bef that was without the six. I would have been unconscious. Yeah. Just... How many? So what's your what's your mic pool? Ten. Uh, oh yeah. You, well, you wouldn't have been unconscious, oh. but she would have dropped you into your speed pool. Oh. Okay. Ooh. You would have been hit. Yeah. Ooh. You would have been. That would have out. But Alicia, did you roll a straight nineteen or did you straight roll a? 19. Oh. That's yeah, right. No. So you got plus oh, six yeah, over you your nineteen. Oh yeah. You beat me by a mile. That's why yeah. I gave you. I thought you, you got like thirteen. See, and the minor effects clicked in. Oh. You roll a nineteen. The minor effect was the. Yeah. Your power. Your bow. Your power basically gave you like a full second of time. Whoa. So. Wow. If you, had um, rolled, if you had rolled a 13 and you had said 13, uh -huh. we all would have been like, but did you add the six? Did you yeah, add the six? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please say you added six points. <laughs> do yeah, your math. The do odds were definitely in your favor on that, but wow. damn. Wow. I was like watching me roll a 20. Just watch. Yeah. She's going to roll a 20. Yeah. <laughs> um, which would have been four extra points of damage. I would have that would have been bad. Yeah. Like, what would have broken. We'd have to call a, call a group box. meeting. <laughs> so. Group meeting. Um, so as I, just, I just start babbling embarrassed excuses. It's uh, okay. Okay, I shut down the program. Uh, powers down. Um, it's okay. We're all. Glasses disconnect. We're just all still learning how to like control things, and it's okay. 
I just want to punch that guy. I know, me too. He's terrible. I had no idea he was like a monster. He seems so like, you know, he does kind of seem a little bit like too, too smooth or whatever. Can't trust dudes like that. I always thought he was a piece of shit, but there's a real difference between that and... And a murderer? Yeah. <sighs> Who was her family? I mean, we can look it up. We can try to find out. But I feel like if if he had her her wife killed, then there may not be records of her. Or, I don't know. Someone's got to talk to him. I mean, I've been thinking. I mean, maybe, maybe we can, like, have our... Shapeshifter, like infiltrate Pyramid Star or something. I don't know. Is that crazy? Crazy like a fox? <sighs> <laughs> I think we gotta get the. What are we calling ourselves? I don't know. I also still want to talk to everyone in the group about disguises. I feel like we shouldn't be just like doing our powers out in public. People That's need, people, not. yeah, we need to like have some type of something. Hey, do you think your mom has any coffee? Of course she has coffee. Do you want to go down there and talk to her and ask her for coffee? Hmm? Maybe that's a bad idea. I mean, we should offer her some coffee. We don't have any coffee. Okay. Um, I do need to get her a gift or something. Can you help me, like, go get a gift for my mom? Yeah. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. So let's cut to Hops, who, leaving your room at the day after, you, um, a rare sight, your mother has made some breakfast. Um, Whoa, I didn't even know we had this food. In the apartment, uh, you smell eggs uh, just just pulling out of, just scraping them out of the pan as you walk in. Um, your mother sees you and goes, hey, baby. Hey, Ma. Where were you when the earthquake happened? Oh, well, you know, I uh, after the convention where they, you know, yeah. honored uh, Dad, I went so, to work and I was just, you know. Just another work. night, huh? Just another night, you know. Yeah, I'd pretty much I barely even felt it. <coughs> I didn't really feel much here. Yeah? Just stayed and watched the news a little bit, played my game. How's everything going at work? Good. Everything's great. Uh, I put more uh, in in the account for you, and so everything should be good for the next couple months. She walks over to you and puts her hand on the side of your face and goes, how'd the speech go, sweetie? Uh, the speech went... Great! I did Dad's old cloud joke. I think it went over well. I hated that joke. She. I think I might have messed up the punchline, but no one noticed. You can't mess up a punchline on a joke that bad, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do miss hearing him tell it. I know. I know. He thought it was hysterical. That's the only reason why it was funny. I think so too. Yeah. What are you doing today? She scraped some of the eggs out onto a plate for you. Oh, thank you. Uh. Well, um... Do you have work tonight? I do. Yeah, I figured I'd go. I, you know, I haven't been getting... Uh, I've been having a little trouble sleeping lately, so I figured I'd pick up a couple more shifts. Okay. Yeah. Well, keep me posted. I mean, if you need me to make you some tea or something, that always helps me sleep. Oh, thanks, Ma. Yeah. Anyway. You look good. Thanks. I, you know, when the earthquake happened, the power went out for a little while, so I went outside, stretched my legs a little bit, came back in. Things kind of, you know, came back on. Yeah. Well... You're anyway, lucky. I'm so sorry to cut you off, baby, but I got a raid to go on. All right, you go get him, Mama. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I'll see you tonight. All right. And she walks past you over to the VR sets. Yeah. Um, and you see this small pile of eggs um, on the plate. She puts on, begins to power in. I'm actually very impressed, though, because usually we just eat the instant meals. <laughs> Mm. No, I didn't even know she got groceries. I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Crazy. Cool. All right. I eat my eggs. You eat your eggs. You just kind of quietly watch your mom as okay. she starts laughing and having conversations with people across the planet, for all you know. 
Um, <clears throat> there's no other table, there's no other plate set at the table. Um, and you're just kind of sitting there eating and watching her. Um, your, fort scra- your fork scraping across the plate. Mm-hmm. Um, and you glance up and you see um, on the wall of the kitchen are the family photos, pictures of your dad right outside of his truck. Um, and the antenna that he carried on the truck and the camera equipment that he had with him. And in the background is an F4 tornado, probably about two miles away. Yeah. And it looks like the snapshot went off just as a lightning bolt was striking. And you're sitting there staring at this and you start smelling smoke. Shit. And Shit. As you look down, you see that you've actually started to, there's a little bit of electrical currents running through the fork and you've started to see that the, the um, the tablecloth is smoking a little bit. Crap. Um, but my mom didn't notice, so. Nope, she's... <laughs> okay. Um, you just kind of... <laughs> I uh, get the spray. The <laughs> you walk over no to the air freshener and just... No one smells anything. <laughs> yep. uh-huh. And... and uh, here, oh, baby, did you, just, did you just spray that smelly stuff in here? Sorry, Ma. No, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't in the game. I'm in a cave right now. Oh, <laughs> You good, Ma? Uh, actually, um, looking at that photo, though, gives me an idea. Okay. And I grab my work bag and I head out. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to cut to Anton. Anton is in a unique position because it looks like hmm. not, okay, I guess, sure, in a very, <laughs> un- very unique position. Remember when SpongeBob would turn into a dip? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anton is... Uh, Damn it. Is... Anton has his own place. Yeah. Doesn't live with his parents. No. He is yeah. early 20s. What is he's, it? he's, he's, he's. Because he has a job. Yes, and hey. not only that, but he's he's well oh. off. He's he's comfortable, as other well off people like to say to not make things awkward, but <laughs> he's, he's he's wealthy, he's got, he's got hookups. So, so he has his own small place. I was gonna say, you live in corporate LA, don't you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. So again, well, compared, to, uh, compared to other Situations, it's small, mm-hmm. but it still is like mm, I'm gonna say Bender's apartment in Robot Arms, where yeah, he's got a little <laughs> closet, but then that huge, gorgeous, his closet is like a really nice apartment, mm. you know. So he's in a unique position. Uh, it seems like in this little break, everybody has agreed to not let our parents know about our abilities. So that's an agreement. Mm-hmm. We're laying low. We've also come to the conclusion that whoever scrubbed that footage has to know who we are, mm. but hasn't made any moves yet. They're keeping us secret for whatever their interests are. They have to keep us secret mm-hmm. for some reason for now. So it seems like we came to the conclusion of we have to keep up appearances mm-hmm. until something changes, but we have to keep up appearances. So because of the fact that Anton doesn't live with his folks, Cut back to when, we, when everything was first freaking out, and we made those calls to our parents to check in on our secure, lacy secure. Is there a voicemail from yourself on your phone? No, 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 not a vo- there, just no. But um, <laughs> what I'm saying is, then on the secured, hey, let's all call of our, let's all call our folks and make sure that they're okay. Mm-hmm. You know, even then, Anton didn't say to his scientist mother and and uh, uh, you know also employed by the company father. Hey, be 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 aware. We're wanted, <laughs> and look out for your own employers that they might be doing shady stuff. He didn't do that. It was all keeping up appearances then. So cut to the present. Anton goes back to his own apartment, but he's still gonna call his mother and father at some point just to again keep up appearances, make sure everything's okay. There was an earthquake. What does a young person do when they're living on their own? But they're still in the same city, and there was an earthquake. Sure. You're gonna, you're gonna mm-hmm. call. You're gonna check in. Yeah. So he calls his mother Evangeline, his father Andres, just to sort of check in. But there's not this. There isn't a similar interaction as everybody else's. Right. You know, there's not that superhero secret identity interaction where you got to go home and make sure everything's you hide stuff from Aunt May. He doesn't mm-hmm. have to do that. It's, <laughs> it's pull him up, check in with him, make sure everything's okay. And then, you know, sort of back to business. So, it's an easy conversation then. Did you go to work today? It's a quick check-in. Um, I will. Oh, yeah. say, Are we going to work today? That, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's play this. Yep. So walking into your apartment shortly afterwards, um, the parent check-in is really, really quick. It's really just like, 
Okay, well, it's good to hear from you, son, but uh, we're, we're very busy. Can we talk to you later today? And yes, Things like that. So, okay, good luck. Yeah. I'm really they, looking forward to hearing about how the convention went. I know yes. that it got stopped short. Yeah, you so. got it. Dad, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Sure. Okay. And goes away. Um, the next message that pops up in the augments reality uh, of the glasses, or no, for you, it's contacts. So as you lean back and you just deep, cycle through and you see another message pop up, um, how you didn't see this before, you don't know, but um, it's from Melissa. Um, and z- you hear the voice message say, Anton, it's Melissa. Listen, I know we got cut off a bit. Um, when we were talking earlier last week, I'm hoping that my assistant Michelle was helping you and was useful at the convention. I need to speak with you about a portfolio that she handed me uh, this afternoon. It's quite interesting. And I believe Michelle mentioned that you might be an associate of the person who handed it to me. Uh, If you could give me a call back. I hope you're well. I saw the news. I understand that there's been a bit of a chaos on your neck of the woods. But um, I'm sure everything's fine now, so if you could return this call at your earliest convenience. Thank you so much, Anton. We'll talk to you soon. Click a few message, next messages. Anton, it's Michelle. Um, listen, I hope you don't mind. I handed off that portfolio to Melissa. Um, she seemed quite keen on it when I showed her some of the uh, specs, some of the, uh, the schematics for improvements on cybernetic limbs. It was quite impressive. I don't know if you still have contact with your friend that you were at uh, the booth with. I believe they were an acquaintance of yours. You seemed friendly with them, although you didn't seem to know their name, so I shouldn't be presumptuous. But um, if it's possible, if you could um, get back in touch with me, if we're able to recruit this person, I think that it would be hugely beneficial to Cassium. Whoever it is seems to have a very intuitive idea of exactly how cybernetics can link to the nervous system. It's quite impressive. Um, All right, I'm taking up too much of your time. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you soon. And uh, I hope you didn't get a bottle thrown at you in the uh, riots. Huh? Bye-bye. We're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts off. Michelle has a crush on you. Ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. I, so. I realize that's kind of workplace harassment, but it's cute because we're in a game. <laughs> uh, we are in a game, and just like Hector in real life, what? I missed something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Never I mind. Up a signal. <laughs> that, that last, yeah, I think you missed, judging from where your attention was going, I think you last missed that last bit of dialogue. Yep. <laughs> she, said, she said, uh, uh, anyway, I hope you didn't have a bottle thrown at your head during the riots. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye. It was like, That's okay, bye! Like, like yeah. minor flirting. It was a, uh, haha, I'm gonna throw in something funny. It's a joke. Oh, gross, I, I did that back. Bye! Like, I care about your well-being. We're gonna teach bye. you to flirt. That's, so, yeah. That's gonna... minor flirting? That's not just yes. workplace, like, uh, right colleague there. banter? I, I am right there with you. <laughs> I, it would just float. You know, it, it explains right past a lot me. in my life. It explains yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, it would have gone right past me. I cannot I tell you... I would have just been like, oh, she's funny. I cannot tell you how many times I've had this conversation with female friends with, you know, uh, a girlfriend, whatever, just like, you know, I, people don't flirt, never, nobody's ever flirted with me. With Hector in real life. No, I'm with oh, you. It's because it, it, I... It happens, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard that. That was not flirting to my brain. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, there's no, no further messages. No further um, messages. You're, it takes you a minute to recall the portfolio that they're talking about, but you seem to remember Lacey and the first time you ever met Lacey. Oh, no, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... There was a 6.0 earthquake. Work schedule goes back to normal when? That day, the next day, uh, is it the weekend? Well, you're a salaried employee, and right now the only thing that you had on your docket was representing Cassium at this convention and then reporting back um, later in the week to your supervisors about um, observations you had to make, areas in which you think we can improve public relations and so on, Mm -hmm. basically as a check-in. So all the people who do the job that you do could uh, share notes, and come up with a strategy for the next year. Well, right now my strategy is, I gotta call Lacey. Okay. I gotta let them know what's going on because there's a lot of things running through my mind right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and dial Lacey. All right, so then let's use this as an opportunity to actually cut to present day. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And Lacey, it wasn't long ago when Anton called you and let you know that Cassium had a keen interest in your portfolio. 
and um, they're waiting to hear back from you. So you'll need an excuse if you don't plan. They, they want to know Lacey's. Uh, they've got Lacey's information, but they're at. They're 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 knocking on your door. Hey, what do you yes, know about yes, this yes, 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 young yes, yes. Br brilliant star in I've, cybernetics? I've passed that on. And my paranoia is kicking in and going, could Cassium have something to do with us? They know who we are. What does that mean? Is this just Pyramid Star Solutions? We never found out who sent the security detail. Yeah. We, I don't know what's happening. We are season one BSG right now. <laughs> um, so it's been, it's been the full two days now. Um, and for two days I haven't heard from Lacey? No, I would say that you and Lacey have probably had a chat. Okay. What I'm going to say is, is we're going to cut to what I'm imagining being where you guys decide to get back together. Yes. Let's get the band back um, together. Oh. So, getting back together, congregating into the same place, where do you guys decide to meet is the first question. And the second question is, where did you hide your flying uh, machine? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> thoughts? It's, uh, it's parked out in Rhapsody. In Rhapsody? In, like, where what? is it specifically? Do you imagine it would be so? Just so you know, the parking lot actually seems to have been working just fine. If you're looking for a place to park that thing again, plus good funnel cakes. Yep. Not to mention the people around that area weren't exactly watching the news that night. Oh. <laughs> so they didn't see that thing. <laughs> they saw it take off and come back and land. We're gonna have to come up with a secret headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably gonna need a place to park this this bad boy. Um, That's Lacey, yeah. it's, it's also worth noting, Lacey, that um, you, have you been to your shop in the past few days? Okay. So why don't we say we're meeting up at Lacey's shop, since you kind of got to be there? <laughs> and um, uh, I have a storage unit that if the owner of the storage unit knew I was using it as my shop, if law enforcement knew, would be very knew. sulky with me. <laughs> um, but... It's what I can work out of that is affordable. So I do that. Um, yes, you get, you essentially get. This is the rocket stuff. Um, you essentially get an address of where to show up for Lacey's shop. Get my tablet and out. <laughs> fixed it. Cool. So upon arrival, um, you do see a very large storage unit that is just lined with machines and racks. What's up? Is it on the water? No, this is okay. actually. This is I actually. I just wanted to check. No, this is this is outside of Raft City, more inland. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Not far from Raft City, but um, <laughs> this place is lined with machines that are being automated and that are constantly doing the work of like screwing in bolts and moving it along. When you walk in, it, it, it is a futuristic version of uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. The mechanisms that are at work here are pure mad science. There are little belts that are moving pieces of technology down into buckets that are then being dumped over and a small robot is picking them up and <laughs> and making what looks like generic parts that could be plugged into all sorts of technology. And they're following a blueprinted layout that has been pre-programmed. It's actually not unusual to see stuff like this, but to see it hand-built by one person in a garage is pretty nuts. Um, so stepping into this area, into this large space, with only one person manning this, so to speak, um, you hear the sounds of industry. Little robots repairing each other. Um, the conveyor belts moving with the parts and things just dangling off of the ceiling. There is one active service droid that is, that is the moment you guys walk in, it just and says, welcome to Lacey's garage. Nice. How may I help you? Hi. Uh, I guess but we'll Welcome look to Lacey's garage. Yeah, we got that. Can, we're looking for Lacey. Lacey is there, and it goes just, you can hear the squeaking as it kind of points. Lacey's sitting anything? on the floor next to their wheelchair, and then next to that is Sweet Baby. You see, like they're making oh. friends. Sweet Baby yeah. is currently plugged into what looks like an, op an open screen computer diagnostic. Um, Lacey, I would imagine that now you've finally gotten back to your garage, you can start running all sorts of tests to find out what the hell Sweet Baby is. Um, I have Two questions. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yes. What's up? 
Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> one cookie. <laughs> uh, does the robot look anything like the robot from Lost in Space? No, it, it looks. It, <laughs> no, it doesn't have a fine butt. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> no, this robot actually looks quite skeletal. It looks like one of the earlier editions. This looks like a robot that someone probably didn't see the value in, but Lacey did, and rebuilt Aww. it. Um, so this fun. this this robot He's squeaks when him. it moves. It squeaks when it moves and asks very basic questions like, "Where is the pain in your cybernetic limbs today? And how may I help?" Um, Meanwhile, across the room, as y'all are, as it's leading you in, that when this robot walks, it doesn't have full articulation in its legs, so it kind of hop, <laughs> it kind of moves like the Mono Chi one in uh, Fifth Element, so it just kind of, mm -hmm. and um, stands at about seven feet tall. It looks like Lacey probably used parts from other robots to build a service robot, um, so it's a little, it's a little goofy looking. Um, it looks like a giant cylinder on two lanky, bony legs, um, with arms that kind of hang off to the side in a, just like a sphere with no visible face and just lights that kind of shine underneath the surface as it's walking. It looks very retro, like 1950s styled robot. Is, does it have knees? It does. Okay. Yep, it's got knees. So it looks um, more like the original Lost in Space <laughs> robot. Closer, ah. without the glass dome or anything like that, but yes. Um, as, as we walk by it, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go, uh, hey, thanks Frank. Tun -tun. And like hit its chest as we. You head are welcome. Over, I head hope over you are satisfied. Yes, great. So we head over to Lacey. I like your robot. You should paint a face on it. Operator Lacey, are these the friendlies? Yes, sweet baby. Designating. We can hear, hear that. Uh, actually, <laughs> with sweet baby, baby plugged into the computer, you're all hearing that. Oh, oh. what was that? Sweet baby. <laughs> yes, yeah. Operator Lacey. No, I was I was just saying your name, but thank you. Compliance. That's Wait. what sweet baby sounds like. That sounds like a full-grown person. <gasps> Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing diagnostics and introducing you to Aurora. <laughs> Have you uh, found out anything else about it? Yeah, what is um, it? Just to set this up, I'm going to say that you were actually in the process of finishing a program that would help you do a full diagnostic on it. Um, give you a piece of information. Sweet baby is an older piece of tech. Um, which is unusual because Sweet Baby seems to have the response capabilities of a modern uh, low form AI. It's really sophisticated. That is a better way of putting it. This, this device is at least 15 to 20 years old. Um, if you would like to run a diagnostic and find out what Sweet Baby is, we can, might get some answers. Um, I'm gonna say go ahead and make a roll. Are you ready? <coughs> oh, Eric. Are you ready? <laughs> I have been ready. I'm going to say you've got a code for this. Pretty much all of your buffs are going to come into play here, which is going to be super useful. <laughs> so, which is going to be super right. useful because the difficulty is nine. Whoa. Okay. Uh, no. You need a 27 or better. Okay. So, <laughs> let me break these down. <laughs> um, I have uh, two power shifts Eight, as seven. a technopath. Okay. Seven. I have a power shift in intellect that helps for coding as crafting. Yes. Six. Six. I have a specialization in uh, using all electrical machines. It's five, four. Yeah, that would count. I five, have four. Two. Specialization uh, is two. Um, my what? computer to act as an asset, asset? in computers. That's so one. Three. three. Yeah. Down to level three. And I would like to expend a level of effort. Okay. Ooh, so two. two. <laughs> you need a six or better. Two. Okay. Two. So, okay. So, so real quick, before you make the roll, I just want to point out to the audience who's probably going, what the fuck? Because I've even heard some people in chat go, wow, they're op. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is the superhero genre is specifically designed so that the characters are in fact op. If you, could, if any of you guys, never heard anyone it, say it op and not no, see for it. The, yeah, for, the, for the old people watching, <laughs> op stands for OP, which is overpowered. Yeah. Uh. So to give you an idea of the way this is set up, it's very much like good old Exalted, which is an RPG where the players literally start as demigods. Hmm. The point isn't your power level; it's how you play in a world where you're, the world isn't ready for you. Mm. It's also worth noting that in the superhero genre, mm -hmm. the GM is allowed to crank the difficulty maximum to 15. 
Mm -hmm. Because y'all are so extraordinary. Look, Tony Stark is op. He is op. Tony Stark deals with op. Oh, yeah. Level one Tony Stark and Iron Man one is op as hell. And just He took on an Abrams tank (laughs) by himself. (laughs) With a box of scraps. (laughs) With a box of scraps. Built this in a cave. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Okay, now that we've said all that, Let's I still have to roll. We're just so excited about. Or we're just super excited about I how you just did pull that off. Right? Absolutely. We just yes. love and appreciate you. He's always saying. Awful at this roll. So yeah. let's. Hope Lacey I'm fan not. club. Let's get quiet for a second. Okay. Go ahead and make the roll. You need a six or better. Eighteen. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. one <Yeah>. six. <laughs> um, is all right. <laughs> what is this, sweet baby? So the code goes to work, Lacey and it begins to break it down. It doesn't take long before you're sitting there looking at this and dancing through the code before you realize it's military. Mm. Fuck. And you continue to scope into the code. Getting deeper and deeper, you're seeing old protocols that have been broken. It looks like some damage, you can't tell, but it looks like a memory wipe took place at some point. That makes so much sense. It begins to become clear that Sweet Baby is some kind of hyper-advanced AI unit that was used on board a Navy vessel, possibly for guidance systems, possibly for navigation. Your guess is either a destroyer or possibly a sub. And the, the box you found it in when you and Luma swam to the bottom of Santa Atlantis that day uh, near Raft City um, is that this thing was shoved into a black box to protect it from ever being found and has been underwater for the past 20 something years. Now, what destroyed it? The only way that this AI unit was pulled from a device that was probably on board of a warship, it had to have either been destruction, someone was trying to steal it, someone was removing it to replace it, you don't know, but it was no, it was, it's no way that it's an accident that this thing was put in a box and thrown into the water. Yeah. Um, you have never heard or seen of a device like this. And this, being 20 years old, is slightly more advanced than the AI that you see walking around today, which has two implications. One, this thing might actually have the capacity of achieving true AI, which is slightly shocking. But two, if this was the level it was 20 years ago, Mm. You, you shudder to think of what's going on today. Wow. My, it, it reminds, quick story, quick, just quick story. When my dad was in the Air Force mm. and Operation Desert Storm had happened, I was a kid that was in love with jet planes and I thought the stealth bomber was so cool because back then I wasn't thinking about the horrors of war. I was just thinking, wow, what a cool plane. And I told my dad, wow, the stealth is such a cool plane. We have such cool planes. And he said, son, the stealth has been classified up until now, and if you know about it, it's because they've got something better. Oof. That's some Area 51 shit right there. Yeah. I love it. He wasn't wrong. Just to clarify, so, too, cow. military, is this United States military? United States military. Okay. The, yeah, the, it looks the, like, from that much you can tell, Lacey, with that kind of role, <laughs> you were able to run a full diagnostic. Now, what you can tell, too, is that whatever its original programming is, it looks like the slate has been wiped. It looks like the root programming of the AI, essentially sweet baby, is the, has the brain of a four-year-old child right now and is learning as fast as it can but it doesn't actually have a protocol right now. It's only establishing things that are familiar. It knows you and it knows all of them. It has them listed as friendlies, but it doesn't fully understand what that implies. Only that not (coughs) Okay. (laughs) Not what? Not foe. And when the diagnostic completes and you see all these lines of code, I mean, it looks like gibberish to the rest of you, except for Oya, you get a basic idea of what you're seeing. The thing is, is a difficulty nine roll just took place in front of you. So you're watching Lacey's brain crunch this, and the word, that's not possible, almost comes out of your mouth as you're watching them hack into this code, and you're just watching it. Now, whatever superpowers you're all capable of doing, you're seeing it firsthand now with Lacey. And it's just this code. Millions of lines of code just filtering through as Lacey's eyes are just darting left and right. And then you hear the voice saying, Are their eyes doing that thing again? Yes. Cool. You hear, you hear, Lace, uh, you hear Sweet Baby's voice go, Diagnostic complete. Mm. What is it? Amazing. 
Sweet Baby is a 15 to 20 year old a military AI associated with Navy, completely and seemingly deliberately wiped of its protocols, um, clearly intentionally removed. Uh, I don't know whether saving it from destruction or removing it for purposes of sabotage, but like, wow. Operator Lacey. Hi, sweet baby. What am I? Oh. Welcome to your first existential crisis. That's a good spot for a break, because... <laughs> 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 the implications of the AI asking what it is kind of echoes with all of you for a second. Uh -huh. Whatever Lacey has found is unlike anything you guys have ever seen in tech today. True AI is something that everyone thought was just around the corner, and then it was discovered that it's actually quite far away down the road. And the implications of the danger of true AI haven't been understated. And yet, you're looking at what might be the first step towards that. And it's sitting there, very passively, with an Oculus focused on a very giggly, very happy Lacey. And from there... Just a real quick clarify yeah. for people keeping track at home. Jessica Jones can lift anywhere between 800 pounds and 25 tons. 25 tons? 25 tons. Where's She-Hulk at? She-Hulk has a power level rating for super, for strength at a level seven. Oh, no, 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 no. that's way means, too strong. <laughs> means incalculable in excess of 100 tons. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's so, mecha. Uh, peel back. <laughs> oh, so is, is... I would say Jessica Jones right now, then. So okay. right right somewhere now. between 800 right pounds. Now. Tier one, one character. 25 tier tons, one. somewhere in there. Yeah. This is you at this tier one. This is just one. you at tier one. Oh, boy. So maybe incalculable <laughs> will be tier six. Right? I mean, let's see how far we get into seasons of Callisto <laughs> 6, but I mean, if we keep gaining tiers, whoa, whoa. who knows where you guys will go. Will your strength outpace my ability to calculate it? <laughs> and will I be able to rewind the whole Earth like Superman? I know. Oh, these are the and questions that, that we will answer after a break. Uh, that, Can I stretch question. even further? Will we have a Doctor Who crossover <laughs> thanks to Oya? <laughs> Duh. Doctor Who? Duh. Am I a Time Lord? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to go oh to break. Boy. We'll catch Companion. you guys back here in about Pops. 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes. Everybody, welcome back to Callisto 6. I'm laughing because we're getting a little punchy. Uh, in our That's in our time zone, it is... Uh, I, I'm not. I'm just going to say it. It's 10 p.m. where we are right now, so uh, we're just going to keep on going. Um, I got to say, there is a serious charm to pre-recording these episodes. I don't know. It's kind of funny because we literally are doing back-to-back -back episodes, so we're, we are living Callisto 6 all night tonight, so it's Callisto fun. Callisto 12. Callisto 12. Ah! Oh, my God. Yeah. To the second power. In chat right now, oh, I'm so probably using sister. all caps and going, oh! <laughs> I gotta remember that I said that so I can film it. <laughs> and also people who are telling us what time it is in their time zone mm. while you're watching this. We appreciate you. Yes. Our UK viewers, man. You oh, constantly yeah. wow the hell out of us. Um, oh. Okay. Uh, before we jump back into the episode tonight, I uh, just want to give another quick shout out. Thank you to Sona and yes. to encourage everybody to check it out. Space. 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 It's space. really cool. It's a very great series. I can't like say space. enough space nice things about really it. Space is really cool, and yeah. so is Sona. And the other thing, uh, too, is the episodes are bite sized. They're really, it's like really quick watching. It's really fun um, and very well done. I'm very excited about it. I'm so happy that to have Ashley join the GNS family has been really cool. So, yes. um, so check it out. And don't forget, use the word space as. Is the code space. use space in the code and you can get 60 days of alpha for free which will just let you binge watch everything you want to watch and then you can cancel it <laughs> but you won't because you need to watch more good good for Kevin ah. uh, <laughs> it's only for good Fortnite Kevin's yeah it's hosted good. by the Library Bards! Oh, uh, yeah! For good Fortnite Kevin oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah hey you can use the code Bards Really? Yeah. What will happen? Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool! Two I don't posts. know. Awesome. I don't know what will happen. <laughs> Bonnie we'll and Xander will literally. <laughs> Bonnie and Xander will explode through your bedroom wall like the Kool Aid Man. With jazz hands. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, you will have to explain that to the insurance and companies. It's very chill. Um, <laughs> yeah. It will come right out of your mortgage. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back into tonight's game. Um, where we left off is y'all were in Lacey's garage. It is late. Um, everybody has left their day jobs and whatnot and congregated at this little spot. Um, 
Lacey's Garage, being typically closed at this hour, has afforded you all a very nice little spot of privacy while you are learning more and more about the object known as Sweet Baby, um, which is something that's been kind of sitting in brewing for a while in that chest that you've been lugging around. Uh, now you've got Sweet Baby plugged into the computer diagnostics and have learned something pretty extraordinary about this thing. Um, and uh, Sweet Baby apparently had its first existential crisis. So we will pick up right where we left off. So y'all are kind of staring at this thing. Um, yeah. Um, you've, you've told Sweet Baby you've just had your first existential crisis, and all of you are kind of just listening a, a bit gobsmacked at hearing this device. Luma, you, yes, yeah. you, this is a first for you. You've never actually heard this device speak like this or ask these questions. Yeah, I'm, co I'm coming in. That's when I come in from the other the other room. This you were cooking on a hot plate, I correct? was cooking on the hot plate. So this is the first time you've all seen me. Uh, Luma looks a little disheveled. They have applesauce down the entire front of their shirt. <laughs> oh, um, And they are holding a pan <laughs> or a, a pot of like a pot in a... Uh, uh, stir. I keep it, what, what spoon? Is, spoon? A wooden spoon. A big wooden spoon. Um, What's this smell like? Uh, oh, you, you smell very, very intense garlicky potatoy soup. Oh, God, mm. I love Italian food. Yes. With applesauce? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Yeah. Nope. There's no applesauce in it. That's there's for me. There's no applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it, it just, she just comes out and she's like, well, "That's what sweet baby sounds like." Mm -hmm. Neat. Are you guys hungry? I got soup. Yes. I figured yeah. we might be here all night. And last time. Last time we got very hungry, so. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is the first time again that you guys have all congregated in one space, face to face, to talk about everything. Okay, so. Lazy soup? Soup. Do you have bowls or cups or can I go? Oh, yeah, no, don't worry. I run back into the other and I. Uh. So they're clean, but these look like machine parts. Yeah. Um, they're Couple they're, coffee they're mugs. basically like. Yeah, they look like they've been refashioned into large coffee mugs oh, and that's bowls. Fun. Uh, we use the neo ceramics for the hot foods, and we don't use the metal, metal ones, ones for the hot foods. I learned. Ah. <laughs> I just I just come Ooh. back out from the other room with like stick. a big metal sheet that was clearly siding for something, and I'm just holding all of the food at mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. Oh, holy day! Right, eat up, please. Kiss. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Luma. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> I know we forget to eat when we work, so. Um, okay. Um, I'd just... like to ask a question. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Lacey? Uh-huh. Did that little sweet baby thing just use I? Mm -hmm. Like, who, what am I? Mm-hmm. I? Like... I it... mean, I, I have to study the protocols a bit more, but this does seem like an example of, of a strong AI. Uh, at least from from what I can oh. see, uh, uh, we we see a lot of things that can do uh, specialized narrow tasks given parameters and behaviors. Um, but sweet baby appears to be capable of general problem solving. Um, is that a good thing? Well, is it's a neutral thing. I mean, we're capable of general problem solving. We're capable yeah. of a lot of things. Should you tell yeah, exactly. it we come in peace or that? Yeah, you're friendly. You've been designated. Does it know our name? Designated. Does it know what oh, um, friendly is? Do you, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. Uh, sweet, hi, uh, hi, sweet baby. I don't know why I just got super nervous. Hi, sweet baby. My name is Oya Guillen. Oya Guillen. Do you did you hear me? Did it, do I have to talk loud? Hi, sweet baby. Yeah, no, the pickups are good. Oh, okay. Um, there's a beat, and you hear affirmative. Oh my Identified, god! Identified, friendly. Hello, uh, friendly Oya. Uh, hi. I'm Cass. <laughs> Cass Shark. Identified. Hello, friendly Cass. Cool. <sighs> oh, this makes me nervous. Hey, we met on the hovercraft. <laughs> Identified. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hello, friendly hovercraft. No, 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 no. We. <laughs> Is there a way to delete that? Okay. That's um, Luma. L revised designation. <laughs> Revising designation. Luma Orsini. Identified. Greetings. Friendly Luma. 
Yo, uh, Anton Andazola here. I'm a friendly. Nice to meet you. Processing. Yo, unknown. Uh, yo is an informal greeting. It, uh, is a friendly greeting. Compiling. Let me throw in some not language at library. Anton, friendly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I <just> said yo. <laughs> oh, this is weird. Are we, are we all doing the door? Okay. Um, hi, sweet baby. Or yo. Uh, yo? Yo. Oh, no, no. Is he going to think I'm sick talking about like a yo yo or something? Like, okay. I don't know. Uh, sweet baby. Just let's start over. Uh, Oh god, I've never talked to like a machine before. Right? It's, it's really, really nerve-wracking. Just say your name. Linda. No, I know my name. Uh <laughs> hey, sweet baby, you can just call me Hops, I guess. Or 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 Lindy Confirm. Hopper. Or my full name's actually like Linda Hopper, but you know. Standing people, by. Uh wait. What does that mean? Stand by. This is weird. Is your communication ending? <laughs> yeah. Did it yes, get yes, talked yes. down to you? Yes! Confirmed. Very mad. Friendly hops. <laughs> See? Wow. It's wow. capable of problem this solving. This is weird. It's really weird. This is why I use a tablet. Apple, 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 Apple. <gasps> yeah. Because she said hop, hops, I guess. And then Sweet Baby was able to understand that I guess was not part of the name. Ah, Sweet Baby, do you know what I guess means? Sweet Processing. Baby. Oh. Explain. I guess. It's like if you're not sure about something, you're like, I guess maybe it's this, maybe it's that. A supposition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Understood. What's a supposition? Sweet baby, do you want to take this one? <laughs> Whatever. This is weird. Definition of supposition. I don't like it that the machine, like, is talking, like, smarter than uh, Lacey. Yeah. Sweet Baby is more than a dictionary, correct? Yeah. What I mean, I haven't loaded a lot of libraries in yet, and then I'll have to sort of, like, program and work on some new behaviors, but, like... It's me on the or way. Or mm. way? Mm. 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 What? Don't say it. Mm. When you think of it, don't say it. So, Lacey, what exactly oh! is your... Wait. um what? What's your intention with Sweet Baby? I mean, there are a lot of things that, that we could do. Um, I, I think maybe if this is like, I think the first thing is to find out the, the degree of personhood that Sweet Baby has and then maybe uh, they'll have their own opinion. About what it wants to do? Yeah. Huh. The opinion of a military applicable <laughs> artificial intelligence from 15 to 20 years ago? Uh-huh. This mm. is blowing your mind? This? <laughs> the weekend we had? No, no, no I'm but... Missing. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with Anton. Like, this is making me real nervous. Like, this, this is why... <sighs> Sweet baby, everything's fine. <laughs> Understood. Yep. Sweet baby, tell everything... Tell Anton everything's gonna be fine. Friendly Anton, everything is fine. <laughs> Look, I know, I know you really like machines and, and stuff, but like, this is like so out of my territory. It, it's a little freaky. Okay. Request designation. Definition. Request definition. What is freaky? <laughs> um. You know, uh, like. Uh, let, let me let me take this. Wait. <clears throat> oh, sweet baby. Turn into a pretzel. <laughs> Can Sweet Baby see us? Like, see yeah. us? Yeah, uh, camera right there. Oh. Yeah, you actually look, and where Lacey has this device plugged in, you see the Oculus is actually projecting what it's witnessing. Mm. Um, whatever's inside the Oculus does have the ability to v- v- switch between, and every time one of you has spoken, it'll immediately look at all of you <laughs> as it comes out. Sweet Baby, in this instance, freaky means um, extraordinary, unique, special. It has a positive connotation, then. In this instance, yes. What instance is this, friendly Anton? A uh, positive one in which we are all excited at your um, level of intelligence and 
uh, goodness. Sure, what he said. Discrepancies That's exactly in logic means. detected. Hmm. Elaborate. What instance is this? Positive. What makes this a positive instance? I have... My intention. Our intentions. What are your intentions? Meeting, <laughs> meeting new friends is a positive experience, sweet baby. Is sweet baby designated friendly? Sweet yes. baby is designated friendly. Sure. Okay. There's no reply. Okay, uh, we need to talk about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So, just to bring everybody up to speed, um, my company, Cassium, is interested in potentially hiring Lacey for oh. their skills and genius. And here is the problem. We don't know what's happening. We don't know how far up this thing goes. We don't know whose company exactly is involved, other than Krauss, which we do know. Pyramid Star Solutions, or maybe Krauss is working independently of the rest of Pyramid Star Solutions. Anyway, the, the point is, is that Cassium being interested in Lacey made me nervous because whoever knows about Callisto 6 and whatever that is knows who we all are. And they're lying low for whatever reason. So, the question is, do we need to continue to keep up appearances? Do I need to pretend like nothing's happening and, and try to find information on my end? Do we need to have Lacey maybe get a job where I work, infiltrate the company, and do something on their end? Or should we keep a low profile? Look, uh, what's the plan? I mean, we need, yeah. we need money, right? I, uh, I have a Money. job. Oh, I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Look, I was just, I was thinking, like, all, like, the one thing we're certain of is that Pyramid Store is involved. Yeah. Shouldn't we start there? Like, yes. we don't even know if your company is involved at all. Good point. Oh, I had an idea. Uh, yeah. I was thinking, since we have our, like, stealth master over here. Oh, me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can like put on a different face and we can get an ID for her. I know some people in Baldwin Island. I have cast an idea. us too. And we can get her a job in Pyramid Star, get her close to Kyle and Krauss somehow. Oh, no. Mm. I don't. I already have a job. I, I, I have a lot of things. Uh, yeah, but does your current job afford us an opportunity to find out what's going on with us? We need eyes and ears. You want me to do a permanent undercover job? Well, no, not I don't know anything that. about Pyramid Star or what they need me to do. I, I, how am I supposed to just get a job? Am I supposed to go knock some, out, <coughs> knock some employee out and take oh, a job forever? No, the first part I could do, and then you could do the second part. Just Wait. temporarily look like it. Didn't somebody oh. tell me that during our first fight with those undercover oh. dudes, you blended into a wall? Mm. You did say that I did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Maybe you could blend into a wall at Pyramid Star. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of wall. Uh, oh but it, I mean, that that doesn't change the fact that I'm physically there. If anyone were to walk yeah. by, I just look like a weird person that's oh, yeah. painted themselves like the wall. Yeah, that's true. I have an idea. Yeah. I don't know if it'll work. Honestly, I don't even like it at all because I never liked the man. There are no I bad know ideas. You thought he was great. Oh, I've had lots of them. <laughs> Sure. All right. He did say at the convention, if there was anything I ever needed, to give him a call. <gasps> yes. What if I said I'd like to come and take a tour of Pyramid Store just for, like, old time's sake and check out, you know, my dad's old labs or something? I know, like, the way you described that lab, that lab, I remember that lab. Really? It's built. The one with the there, two be careful. banisters. Remember, we used to slide really down the amazing. banisters. Really? You were in that lab? When I was a kid, but like, you know, I didn't do anything. Wow. wow. That's really risky. Show her the thing. Oh, I haven't even shown you. But like, be careful, because it's really convincing. Huh. Yeah, don't let anyone like sneak up behind you and surprise you. What? Mm. No uh, reason. Yeah, no reason. Um, I pull open the, the VR experience. Okay, you um, can link actually, up to it, but the thing is, is that yeah, she doesn't have any, she would need to borrow somebody's glasses. Yeah. 
Can she borrow? Okay. All right. <sighs> and if you anyone else on. wants to patch in, feel free. I can make the, I can make it bigger. Okay. You guys should see this. Okay. Okay. Um, you can actually patch it so that everything that she's seeing will come up on the screen. Beautiful. Let's do oh. that. Kitchen's where? Oh, it's 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 not really a kitchen. It's more of like a, a closet with a Bear hot back. plate. Okay. Um, okay. You would go. <laughs> oh, hey, did you bring that cafecito? <laughs> the instant one is not as good, but can you, can you make some of that? Thanks. Hot plate. So you slide yeah. those glasses on? Yeah. You slide those glasses on. And immediately, again, the room around you gets a little dark. And you've you've done this. You've seen this before. Your mom's VR set's a little more advanced than this. Yeah, um, I got her a nice you one. You slide it in. You see a laboratory that doesn't look familiar to you at all. This oh. this laboratory looks completely restructured and different. It looks a lot. Um, it, it looks very modernized. Okay. Um, Never mind. It does. It does have a familiar layout. Mm -mm. But it doesn't look like any lab that you've seen. I guess I just got excited when I when you talked about the banisters because I used to slide those on those. But she's really good, right? Yeah, this is amazing. I I don't recognize the lab per se, but I mean, yeah, I don't recognize it either. Hmm. Wow, hmm. could be off the books, off the grid, or just a new play. I mean, I. I mean, it yeah. could be completely remodeled. It could be somewhere that we mm -hmm. did go. But, I mean, mm -hmm. it has been... The last time I was there, I was yeah. like, what, like nine, ten? Yeah. Um, Look at yourself in the thing! Oh, yeah. Walk over to that uh, big... <laughs> okay. Containment thing. So you walk over to the big containment area. Two things you spot. First of all, you spot the identification of Dr. Patel. Which is up, ah! on, the, which is up <laughs> on the... The, the identification of, is up on the screen. Oh, never mind. <laughs> 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 That's um, cool. <laughs> the identification, of course, saying level one clearance, sure. which, by the way, level I would one. say. Um, it's impressive. That's what it said in the barcode. Well, oh. the other thing, too, is level one clearance being the highest clearance could explain why you don't oh. know this lab. That could. Uh, um, right. But uh, the other thing you see is the face of a dead woman looking back at you in a yep. reflection. There we go. Ah! <laughs> there it is. Um, we can all oh, see this the on the fidelity feed, right? on the engineering yeah. for this containment oh, yeah. field. Yep. And oh, yeah. that is why I do not do the VR thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for that a magical experience in a laboratory. Okay. All right, I'm going to cross the room, and I just give the glasses back to... Oh! Yes. Uh, <laughs> arms stretch all the way across <laughs> the room. Nice. Getting pretty good with that stretchy thing. Yeah. yeah. Lacey, did you ask something? Yeah, the the containment field. How high is the fidelity of what you recreated? I mean, this is from memory, but I have a pretty good memory, so I don't know what's the. <laughs> I, I want to kind of see what I can see about the engineering of the containment field because I just built a resonance field. That's this thing. Take the glasses back. It, it, it definitely bears a resemblance. But they have contact. But from what you can oh. tell, this thing is heavy duty. Yeah. Um, this is similar to what a modern day nuclear reactor might look like if it had been hollowed out and was just being kept. That Like if you were trying to insert uh, the radioactive rods into a reactor, this, this thing looks like it's designed to <coughs> Contain some serious energy output. Interesting. Um, if if this is as accurate as Oya's memory, and very likely is. So then, are there also a lot of coolant systems? You don't see so much of those. It looks like a lot of the. It looks like a lot of the lab. It's, it, it looks like it's a lot. You can tell just from just seeing, um, looking around inside of it, that. It's built largely, it's like a snapshot of a dream. So you're getting a lot of detail, but it looks like there are some areas that haven't been finished being built because that's simply where the memory ends. Um, Oya was very thorough in creating everything that she remembered. And so there are portions of the wall that just simply stop existing. Hmm. She recreated it just like she saw it. Hmm. Big so. picture of this is actually really interesting from an engineering perspective. Like, if you have some big containment field, if you have anything that's working with a lot of energy, if you don't want it to blow up, like, you have to, you have to, you have to keep it cool. Like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, liquid cooling in a computer. Mm -hmm. um, but that isn't there. 
that's just... that's what's cool. It, this energy is weird. And on that note, you, Lacey, would spot the Callisto Six canister perfectly recreated inside the containment field, yeah. which is exactly where you saw it when you were witnessing this whole thing. I want to see this. Okay. So are we taking a tour? <laughs> I mean, oh. yeah. I don't, I don't. I mean, I could try. I could say, let's. You know, is this get the you favorite all we want to burn? Um, Here's the thing. You could you could look like my mom. We could say that we we go. Oh. We, you get transformed into my mom. That's a pretty, That's good, a idea. pretty good idea. Idea. Okay, but I, it's a I risk if, if if Kraus is behind this yeah. and we reach out to him and he knows who we are. How else are we going to get in there, though? could be in danger. There's got to be other ways. Me. Um, Potentially. I mean, if <laughs> your company really likes my stuff, if they think it's good, it wasn't... It was built for rockets. It, it has applications in cybernetics, yeah. but... That means Pyramid Star might like it too. Uh, that could be a way in. I have some contacts at Pyramid Star. But here's the thing, like you just said, if he's involved and knows who we are, then that just puts Lacey at risk too. Like no matter what, we're going yeah. into a risk. But if he knows who we are, we're in danger. And if he doesn't know who we are, we're not in danger. But we don't know whether he, and I come back around the corner <sighs> with an instant cappuccino in yeah. whatever, what random machine part would be good for coffee. Oh, oh, jeez. Um, I think that, like, there actually is one mug. With the mug. <laughs> we all share it. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's like a peace pipe. <laughs> I'm going to call this out, and anybody can throw it down if they want, but I'm going to insert immediately a GM intrusion right now. All right, give it. Um, all right. Robot comes walking in and says, Lacey. Are you available for work? Um, yes, dearie. I shall show them in. Um, you got some customers? Should Do we, we leave? Need to leave? Like, uh, no. No one's stopping they the intrusion? Here, they it's come an, here sometimes. An intrusion on Lacey? That's an intrusion. I'm letting it, I'm opening this up. I'm, oh, I'm staging here. a GM intrusion. Okay. Anybody can interfere with this if they want. Nope. Okay. We still have I some things this. to discuss, but like, you should, at yeah. this particular time, uh, we have no reason to stop this. Right, we don't Customers have to just come back yeah, along. The only reason we, we, yeah. who gets the, like, the XP and the thing for information. Um, oh. I'll, I'll give you guys a heads up. Um, there's a good chance I'm just going to award everyone one XP at this point. Yep. Okay. Um, because I've just been watching, I've just been watching an, a full episode of fucking great role playing. So <laughs> should we take uh, a vote? I, we're just gonna let we're, everybody's in agreement. I want a bad idea. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't mind throwing some more of this currency at you guys. So here we go. Um, a few moments later, the robot comes walking back with a gentleman behind him. Um, gentleman is a very large man, um, slightly bearded. Uh, looks like he might come okay. from, looks like he has a cybernetic arm that's not working so well. He, he, um, as yeah. he comes walking back behind the robot, and he goes, Hi. Hi. Sorry, I looked you up in the, uh, the phone book, and I noticed that uh, you kind of... And he stares at you. And continues to stare at you. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Stops in mid-sentence and just goes, Holy shit. No, that was a dream you had. Bye! Uh, where are you going? Uh, just around the corner into the non-existent kitchen nook that's a closet. No, wait. We would all recognize him. Wait, yeah, wait. Because he was on the ship. Really. Yeah, I, I think at this point, when you see the reaction here, you all start kind of getting a sense of familiarity suddenly. His interview was um, on the news. As you pivot, he just goes, no, wait, wait, uh, I just, uh, okay. Oh, uh, I guess I should go. And uh, is, is, it a, is it a piston problem? What's what's going on? Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not actually sure. It hasn't been working properly for months. Okay, let's see. Let's look at this. Come on in. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. What was your name again? Bye. Uh, it's just Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. Uh. And uh, are you open? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, look at the, I Lacey. look at you three. Designation for newcomer. Uh, I go sub vocal. Okay. 
<laughs> Friendly, suspend uh, further operations. Understood. Powering down. I'm gonna go back to the <laughs> not kitchen. Yeah, I'm um, just gonna <laughs> give the look. Um, sweet baby just suddenly turns off. <laughs> and you see he goes, what was that? <laughs> oh, um, the AI project. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I wanna see if I can build something that can make me coffee. I can't make coffee. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, if you don't mind taking a look. Sure. Uh, no, I, I don't have a lot. A lot of what? Uh, you know, money. I've got a little bit saved up, but maybe you could tell me what's wrong with it, and if it's not too much, then... Uh... Oh, no, I have the parts for this. That's not a problem. Okay, yeah, just let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll throw whatever I got at you, and maybe make don't a deal. Don't throw things at me, please. Um, but... You don't want to be paid? Um, no, you're in after hours. Well, yeah, and I feel kind of bad. Look, uh, are you guys the ones that rescued me the other night? Because... Uh, I'm gone. I'm in the kitchen. Okay. Kitchen. I'm, like, peeking behind the wall. The one with the rainbow hair literally picked me up like I was a sack of potatoes and carried me across a stretchy guy 200 feet above the ground before uh, the whole thing blew up and then set me down on the plane. She's really strong. I think there was a gas... Lee? Yeah, she is. He still looks at you as you give him the confirmation, and he just goes, yeah, mm -hmm. really strong. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, brother. Uh, uh, Anton, this whole time, has been doing something on the down low. Okay. He has been subtly shape-changing his jawline to poof it out a little bit. Pump up his chest a little bit. Okay. He also you hold on the, out? he also on the slide changed his glasses to uh, he threw some shades on changed the glasses to be this nice deep red. Okay. Uh, that might be familiar to the people that are watching the uh, intro. Okay. The show, and uh, Anton kind of stands up and go, <laughs> "Hey brother, I gotta tell you what, man. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, uh, them over there, they're they're in here all the time, working constantly. So uh, <laughs> you're in the right place, for the right time, brother." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and use oh, my uh, yeah. uh, one of my oh, yeah. special abilities, okay. which is literally called erase memory. What? What? You have erase memory? I have yeah. it too. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm I'm chalking it up to you. Let me know if this will work or not, GM. But I'm chalking it up to erase memory. I'd like to essentially translate to like charismatic speaking PR. To make him think, will. so not necessarily yes. erasing him, but no, helping but him just, remember maybe it differently. Doubting. Recontextualizing Recont the narrative. And, Gaslighting. And, and <laughs> erase memory really works for the past few moments or minutes or whatever, so it's not a thing of like recontextualizing that night, but recontextualizing right here, right mm -hmm. now. So Different and, chin shape, oh, no way, brother. <laughs> so Anton uh. literally has the ability to sort of manipulate a social interaction with their power. Yeah, a little bit. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I would say um, so. Even I'm convinced. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what is? How does that operate? How does that work? Uh, let me. Uh, let me. Uh, let me. Uh, expl let me read it. Let's see here. All right. This is how this works. <clears throat> how we do it? Here it is. You have 31. the same power. One sec. Uh, erase memory. You reach into the mind of a creature. In the, yeah. Within immediate range Flavor and make text. an intellect roll on a success, you erase up to the last five minutes of its memory. Okay, make a make a roll. Uh, difficulty is three. Point. Yeah, I have an edge in intellect. Okay, so it'll cost you one less. Does that mean it's free? Because you, you, how much does it cost to activate it? Uh, it's it said it's an intellect roll. An intellect roll. Okay, so you're just yes. gonna roll. Okay, so if you're gonna spend effort, then it's gonna cost you two points as opposed to three. Three intellect points, correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So then you're gonna spend two intellect points and make the roll. Difficulty here is three. Okay. So you need a nine or better on a D20. All right, okay. Um, I feel good about this one. <clears throat> Last five minutes, here we go. 15. Okay, he just goes. Uh, okay. Yeah, sorry, it's just something really weird Happened to me the other night. Hell, I, I bet there was an earthquake, man. I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It was, it was pretty strange. Uh, yeah. You see that shit that happened on the news? Oh, yeah. I was there. Oh, right on, brother. Hey, listen, I'm going to head in the back and have some food, but you take care. Okay. Pat him on the, on the, on the shoulder. Oh, okay. And he, okay. He looked like he was really excited to tell the story, and as you yeah. kind of walk off, he just goes, um, 
Anyway, yeah, uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. Yeah, no, it looks like it's not the first time that it's been repaired. I don't think they used the best PSU, so we're, we're just gonna... It's constantly hurting around the place where they attached it to. <sighs> okay, that's, that's organic stuff, so let's see if we can mark where that is, and then you, you can see someone in biomedicine. Okay. And, and they can maybe help. Yeah, I had a feeling uh, you were gonna say that. Thanks. No, I, if I could just get it moving, that would be all right. Yeah, totally. That's that's circuits. That's good. That's okay. Machines. I got you. Um, I'm yeah. in the kitchen, like I don't know. That guy covered for us. He's actually kind of cool. Should we go? Should we go talk to him? <laughs> that's when you can hear right. his voice. Huh? Perfect. Can we yeah. No uh, difficulty. Way, <laughs> uh, it's it's relatively new cyber tech, and the installation is not bad, um, but. It does it. It's one of those. It's one of the earlier versions. It's it's in that range of earlier version of CyberTech where it requires maintenance, and he either has run out of the capacity or has not been keeping up with it. Yep. But you can tell that the organics around the attachment are inflamed, and but what's causing the what's causing the issues are definitely mechanical. So go ahead and make your roll. Difficulty is three, of course. Lacey, do you have to roll? <laughs> okay. So a diagnostic check reveals that it's just, um, it's off-market cyber installation. Probably probably somebody who, who couldn't afford cyber cyberware at the time, didn't have too many options, and instead of getting a prosthetic, decided to use Go Cyber. Um, yeah. um, and you're sitting in there, and he's just like, how does it, uh, does it look like you can fix it? Um, I mean, they cheaped out on the components. Yeah, I didn't have a lot. I mean, it was kind of a I mean, the nice thing is that this is a fairly modular setup, so we can swap things out. I mean, this this arm is basically Theseus's ship. I don't know what that is. It, but Your arm, real soon. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Sure. Um. It was a stupid idea getting this thing. What happened? I lost it in a factory accident, actually, when I was working at Traeger a long time ago, but uh, they didn't cover the injury, and so mm -hmm. I, uh, at the time, they were in the middle of some kind of dispute with Cassium, so there was a health insurance issue, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, so I decided to get this because the work that I was getting later was doing bouncer work, you know, and I didn't mind a prosthetic, but then I just realized... If I had a cybernetic arm, maybe people would be even less inclined to mess with me, you know? I mean, I was a pretty big guy back then. Did it work? But, yeah, it actually did. You know, people still have a lot of false conceptions of how cyberware works, so That's they cool. see this stuff and they just think, oh, wow, he could probably lift a car or something. I mean, I could crush cans, but... <laughs> anyway. Um, we, we don't have a lot of cans. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you should be crushing pretty soon. Great. And, um, I... I um, I reach in and as as part of what I've I've sort of been doing as mm -hmm. moonlighting, I have a, a anti rejection med stash. Okay. So I'm going. I, I would like to pass him a box. He goes. What is that? He flips it up and he goes. Oh hey no I don't I can't afford this. Nope. No I mean no, I really I can't afford that nope. like that's that's some grade medical stuff I can't mm -hmm. afford it. Nope. It's fine. You giving this to me? It's after hours. Kid, you know that this could buy you a car. I can't drive a car. <laughs> I can kind of drive a car. <laughs> well, I haven't been able to drive one since this thing started acting up. It should be good now. Uh, do this. Oh, holy shit, look at that. I wasn't moving it because I thought it was still broken, but no, it's working. Oh. Hey, that's really good. There you go. Where'd you learn how to do that? Um. On the job. Just here on the job, huh? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Are you sure about this stuff? I mean, I, I get uh, hourly during the day. And then you're after hours and you have to help people. Right? Tell him to leave some money if he's got any, though. Come on. All right. But, uh... You don't look like the type of person to ever go to bars, but if you ever want to, come visit the water sprite and they'll hook you up. Water sprite. Listen. Why don't I look like someone who goes to bars? You're too nice. And he 
sprays it into his arm and just goes, oh my god, that's so much better. Twice daily. Twice daily. The whole run. You got it. He closes it up and goes, um, I didn't get your name. I'm Lacey. Lacey. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. You know, you may not have been there that night at the tower where I got my ass <laughs> saved, but you certainly <laughs> saved it now. Sounds like it was quite a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen. You're, uh, you're not a political person, are you? Why? Just, uh, I'm part of a movement, so to speak. You know, we're pro-prop uh, measure Z. You know, trying to make sure the corporations don't take over the city and all. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't need to bring politics into this. It, it's fine. You did something nice for me. But if you ever, you know, decide to do something a little wacky and you want to get political, you know, come visit the Water Sprite. We have meetings down there. We're staging our next protest. Nothing like the last one. That got out of control, but, you know, no climbing on top of tall things next time. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I guess if you climb, you can climb with both arms. Yeah! <laughs> Maybe next time don't give signs to 12-year-olds. Pretty nice. Hmm. Thanks again. Have a good day. <laughs> See ya. Waves with his arm. <laughs> See ya. Walks out, holding. <sighs> Did I do okay? <sighs> oh my god, that you was did wonderful. Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hell yeah, brother. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you what just the hell was that? You <laughs> deflate. <Who is> <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I've ever seen you have. Oh. In a did good it, way. Well, with it, a stranger, I mean. Yeah. I, uh, it was kind of. But, and it never ended back here, and I yeah. didn't want to do it wrong, and so. You didn't just, do anything wrong. Do they not usually those? have pleasant social interactions? What's that? Do they not usually have pleasant social interactions? Lacey's the nicest. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> Okay, well, I, uh, look, I'm thanks. Sometimes. Everybody, I guess, for going with no, me no, on that. No, I, I didn't know if that was. I didn't know if that was the right thing to do, but. No, it was perfect. It was okay. smart. Yeah, I kind of like that guy. He seemed like he was on the level. <laughs> he seemed yes, really sweet. But yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting. The, maybe I'm letting my paranoia get the best. Mm -hmm. I just have had my entire world implode on me in the <laughs> past couple days. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, you're probably okay. right. Look, back to what we were talking about. Hang on, I have a question first. He's great. Huh? Uh huh. Mm. So does that mean only people who don't look nice drink? Uh, you? it's a mixed uh, bag. Eh. It's usually people who don't look nice and people who look very, very, very nice. Okay. Huh. Which one am I? Because I definitely drink. <laughs> so I look nice, but not very, very, very nice. I don't know. Well, we I have don't know a lot of berries in there. Right is. <laughs> if we live through this, Anybody, I want to find out. You ever been to the water sprite? Have I been to the water sprite? No. But it, any, it, there's a bar I haven't been to? This this bar it's is probably that has a political meeting that you've never been to. It's it's a bar that's uh, you you're guessing, uh, it's probably in the vicinity somewhere between Raft City, and Palisades. But yeah, not I've been to Raft City, but I don't know the entire scene. Yeah, yeah. none of us have been to the Water Sprite. Mm -mm, no, it's just another bar in L.A. But I mean, it's he was also, right. I'm not the. Yeah. <laughs> it's also too expensive once you get on the land. Ah, uh, uh, there real. it is. It's a quick search though on the on the net. To find it, if you wanted to. And Tears are yelping water sprite right now. <laughs> but, okay. but you were saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What kind of establishment is it? Water sprite comes up. It, it's definitely it is near Baldwin Island, but it is oh. in a section of the town that looks like it didn't get a lot of the funds for reconstruction. It's in the old flood zone. So. Oh wait, it's in Baldwin Island. Here? It's uh, near Baldwin Island. Oh. It's, so it's in the <laughs> flood zone. This was an area of the city that was actually submerged underwater and okay. largely destroyed before the waters receded. So some of this part of the town actually looks quite modern, even though it's not in corporate LA. Um, but as you get a little bit closer to Raft City and the Palisades and everything else like that, you start it's, the city starts to, cityscape starts to change again. Um, even though it too also suffered a lot of water damage when the ocean decided to creep up on the land, mm -hmm. but um, when you finally find it in the search, it looks like just a typical uh, hole in the wall huh. bar, and it's just called Make it. yeah. Looks kind of cozy. The water sprite has, it has, the, <laughs> it does have the 
it, 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 it does kind of immediately give you the impression of what kind of hangout it is because there is what looks like a naked fairy standing sitting on top of a crescent moon and it just says water sprite written across and but the fairy herself doesn't even though she is naked does not look quite sexualized it looks like she's downing a full bottle of alcohol I like um, this bottle <laughs> so it is a but so the establishment itself looks kind of shady <laughs> grimy maybe Definitely tipping towards it. Sleazy. The way the way it's advertised, a little a sleazy. Sleazy oh. dive. Yeah, a dive dive, like a sleazy dive. Um, but judging from the neighborhood, it doesn't look like it's in a questionable place. It's just got a sh unusually oh, does it have suggestive. Uh, yeah, it does actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, look, thumbing through some of the events that take place at this bar, the fact that it does look slightly like a seedy dive bar. Um, yes, it has karaoke. It has Irish dancing on Thursday nights. Um, and it has darts competitions. What? Fun. Can this be our Which, <laughs> Does it by chance have, like, the further I dig in, like, just statues and art of various genders? Just because it's a generally... Uh, you mean inside the bar itself? Sure. No. Okay. Nope, there is no, that there's no, cool. when you get inside the bar itself, there's no indication as to say why there's a motif of a fairy outside at all. Because it's um, called the water but, sprite? But what you get, yes, mm -hmm. but what you get is, <laughs> what you get is that this bar has passed through three different owners. Mm. Ah. And uh, it was actually, <laughs> um, it actually started as a Wiccan store, apparently. Nice. And um, it was just called the Sprite. And then when it became a bar, um, and it's next in our incarnation, After somebody it just flooded. somebody just added water sprite to it, <laughs> and it just kind of went from there. It looks like the bottle of alcohol was probably attached to the outside sign sometime after it became a bar. <laughs> Which is very old or neon. Yeah, neon. <laughs> it's it, it's not it's not it doesn't look like a place that's really been well kept on the outside. Um, it is a bit of a patch job. Is there a time range on when it was a Wiccan store? Uh, yeah, it was actually um, it was actually about ten years ago. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. huh. So it's like a new agey. It didn't specialize in Wicca particularly. It kind of covered all sorts of ranges. Uh, new age religion, kind of across the board. So everything from Druidism to neo Wicca, it's right across the board. Definitely Santa Maria. So I would know that place. <laughs> or um, I would have known it when it was there. It's very likely, yes. It's very likely that Oya would be like, oh my god, that became a bar. Oh, that place? <laughs> <laughs> oh, How okay. did that become a bar? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Why did it become a bar? It was doing so well. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, there it is. Um, it used to just be called the Sprite. Mm -hmm. I remember that place. Do you remember? Uh, vaguely. I would get my candles there as a kid. They smelled wonderful. I know, but then they closed down, and I guess they became a bar. I didn't know that. It's kind of a real plus minus situation. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I bet they don't smell as nice. Mm. Yeah. Depends what you're looking for. Mm. <laughs> so. I've fallen down a real <laughs> research hole here. Yeah, yeah. okay, <laughs> we wow. <laughs> we got really detailed Which is on that. pretty realistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, unfortunately, so we unlike <laughs> other RPGs, uh, un uh, unlike other RPG shows, uh, we have the added uh, the added hurdle to jump that uh, our characters themselves can actually fall into the YouTube uh, <laughs> rabbit hole if we're not careful. Yeah. That's literally what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Googling. You, we were deciding which one of Cut to six days later and you're all still on Wikipedia. Just oh, wow. Not forever. Not forever. Uh, yeah. Sure. So what? So Definitely what are we? What forever. are we doing? We know we need to get somehow into Pyramid yes. Star. I'm more in favor of the momentary. Uh, um, Mission rather than the permanent placement missions. He um, isn't. I don't want any one of us to take a job there permanently. That's just my two cents at that. No job is permanent. You can always quit a job. So true. Yeah. Okay, but he, here's another uh, thing. We don't if we, know if we're allowed to quit this job. Oh. But your oh. fake identity to might be able Dr. to. Patel. That's true. Dr. Patel could not quit. Can we? I don't. Family. Okay, so I don't want to know, but sh should we look up Dr. Patel's family? Do you really want to do that? I've been kind of curious too. Didn't didn't your vision say that they were gone? Yeah, that her wife was, but maybe okay. there's other family members. I'll run a search. Did somebody swipe her ID yeah. card? Oh, oh yeah. It was level one. Because maybe That's if I thing. touch it again. I don't know if that I wonder if it works. Still works. 
That's what I was thinking. What if oh. we did the whole thing where I asked oh. for a tour and I, you change into my mom or something, and then once yeah. we're inside, you can go Swipe pee or whatever, and then change into something else? No. And no. Small question, no. though. Hang on. No. But but if I scan with uh, Dr. It's Patel's thing, it's going to go yeah, off. They know, know that she's dead. Ugh. That's Maybe true. not. Wait. Maybe we can alter it. Maybe. I think Just... It's the same code, just change, change what the name identifies in the as computer? As long as it's somebody in the staff directory, database, the yeah. database. Okay. That's, that's doable. I can look. I might have to go into uh, their actual database to find the designation, but I can take a look. Okay. And, and us going there and, like, us reaching out to... Rouse? No. 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 But it actually might actually... No. Give no us way. a hint if he does know. And no, what's wrong? What? Why no? The Cops. hint could be killing Lindy. You, okay, but if okay, what do we know about Kraus? Okay, so if he knows that there's like this super awesome weird energy thing that is now he knows inside of people, I don't think he's gonna want to destroy that. He may just be really sneaky and try to befriend Lindy. Uh, yeah, no, there's not going to be any befriending. Well, of course me. not. Trust we me. know that. We know that. But I don't know if he'd hurt you. He knows oh. there what you were. He people might know who you are. The other night, trying to kill us. A crew of nobodies in masks were trying to kill us. Yeah. They weren't. Were they getting? I mean, were they ordering themselves? We don't know. Probably not. They might have been just operating under unfriendlies. Fire. They were being attacked. We were attacking them. Ah, what oh. are we doing? All I know is us sitting here just talking about it is not going to help. We need to do something. I mean, what if there's something in there that can take this away? That would be nice. Maybe. Look, Hops, I don't want you to go in there by yourself. No, I'm going. Completely defenseless with you, with me, and with you. That's still three out of the rest of the six of us. Here's what I know. We work well as a unit. We have yeah, got yeah. abilities that work well as a unit. And if we go in there and they know we're going in, then we're playing by their terms. And Kraus knows you're going in. Whether he's evil or not, he he's knows evil. you're going in. Don't sure. they? Okay, yes, 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 yes. So we infiltrate. Okay, so. Yes, at the very least, it should be the six of us, maybe, going in. If Pyramid Star Solutions works any way, that Cassium works, they're gonna have high security at all hours, but if we go in at, I don't know, three in the morning, yes. in the dead of night, we'll have the advantage because we have abilities, we have skills, we have tech, we have Lacey. Again, I repeat, we have Lacey, and they could get us in in a way where we have the advantage versus being completely out in the open, unguarded, vulnerable, and you walking around and Kraus knows who you are, and even if I'm there with you, and even if you're there with us, in a disguise, whatever, we're down three people. What if we go on like one of those normal tours that they do and we just all go together, but we can kind of With change. the public? Yeah, just like in a big group. In, they do just, groups of like 30, well, I mean, they used to. I don't know what if they still do them we anymore. We stand out. And I, what could we. stand out. Yeah, but, but then you'd be alone again. What could we gain? What could we hope to gain? What could we learn and find out that we couldn't otherwise do on our own at three in the morning by hacking the damn place, by breaking in and just hacking it? I mean, I could uh, do that that uh, alternate feed that we talked about before. Yeah. It would be a live one. We just have to do that while we get through. Yeah. I, I think this is this is doable. We can we can break it down, and then if we get into trouble, there are dumpsters. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. All right. Okay, I kind of like that plan too. Yeah. I just All right. didn't want you to go in there by yourself. I understand. Why not? It's as good as any other plan we to come up with. with. So is the plan a cyber invasion of Pyramid Star Solutions? A cyber-assisted infiltration. In person, yeah. So, so Lacey. All of us are going. Yes. Yeah. At Lacey, tonight. Just so you know, this might require you going deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Yep. Yeah. I understand. This is probably going to require a, a dive. Yep. Um, Perfect. And Luma and everybody else probably doesn't under... I'll, I'll give Lazy this piece of information. They probably don't understand <laughs> that. 
they probably don't know exactly what you're going to have to do to get into the database over at Pyramid Star. I'm going in, and whatever was chasing me before is probably going to come after me again, and I don't tell them. Oh, goodness. Mm-hmm. Could have taken two or a day. Lazy. Lazy. Would worry. Conspicuous. Lazy doesn't tell anybody about the risks involved. Lacey, let's just say that there is an element to what has been suggested that Lacey is completely left out. Can I tell if I can tell if Lacey's hiding something from... I'm specifically not telling, so you won't want to. <laughs> I know. Uh, like, that's well, I know. There's, there's a role to this. There's a role to this. That's fair. You... What do you mean something's being left out? Um, it's a lie by omission. Uh, Lacey is not actually... Lacey has just told you all that... They can get it. They can get in yeah. with Oya's help. Mm-hmm. They'll do a, a cyber infiltration and get you the information you need. Yep. Lacey hasn't told you how they're doing it or what's required. Oh. They've just banking off of all the confidence that you have shown in their incredible abilities to go through code. Well, they have left out. They're, they're riding that wave. So there's really, it's really kind of like the perfect breeding ground for a lie. They don't have to tell you because everyone's convinced that Lacey can get it done. What Lacey is not telling you is how it's going to have to happen if it's going to get done. Um, but so, we're about to do something dangerous, and Lacey is very calm. Not just so, calm, calm but, but, because but excitingly happy. I'm not in physical danger. <laughs> right, but, but I'm about to Oh, be, yeah, no, I and understand you're happy. happy. Can, can you, exactly. you want to go for this? Yes, I do. All right, let's go for this. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to point out that technically, on a, on a technical level, mm-hmm. Lacey is in physical danger. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not in physical danger. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> then I'm going to need rolls. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Can, um, uh, oh! I, have a, I have a three shift in detecting falsehoods. No, you have an inability. I have an ability. Inability. Inability. Yours Wait, what? In you're other words, you're bad at, at, at oh, spotting bad at it? lies. Yep. Oh, because you see the good in people, yo. I do see the good. Oh Oh, boy! Oh boy! All right, Lacey, throw a roll. Uh huh. Throw throw some die, Lacey. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. So train specialist in Uh, ability. Oh, this is is like minus sense motive. Mmm. I thought that was these. Nope. (laughs) Let's go. So what am I rolling? I'm rolling at a negative what? Negative three. Ne- just negative three. Because if anything three. good is like a plus three, then yeah. Can you spend effort on these? I don't know. Oh no, there's no there's no actual penalty. So if you don't have, oh wait, an inability, I would say yes. Right. Negative three, yeah. That that would make sense. Mm. <laughs> Nineteen. <laughs> Woo! Minus three. Minus 16. three. Seventeen. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. Uh, um, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, yeah. I love okay. you. I can't believe you've been lying to me after all these years. <laughs> okay. It was just an idea. Well, that's shared. all. <laughs> just an idea. We don't have to do um, it. I know how much you would worry about me. Oh no, we're doing me. it. I mean, it seems okay. like. We have no reason to. This meeting has gone on too long. Uh, We're doing it. Lisa has the right of it. We're done with the meeting. Yeah. Uh, I said you have the right of it. There's no no reason. Uh, uh, Yeah, we don't know. Boomer just stares at you Um, for a really long time and has that. that You know what though? That something is wrong, but doesn't know why and just Mm. accepts it. (laughs) Um, Here's the thing, though. Oh yeah, you actually might have an inclination. <laughs> oh yeah, you might know. Him. You actually might have an inclination. <laughs> I will roll this shit. So roll. I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna have. I'm not gonna have Sam re-roll. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have you roll against what Sam just. Oh, for- a 17. All right. What? So, okay. Oh. Okay. What do I have? Premonition. I mean, what would this no be? premonition? That's not gonna help yeah. you here. This is gonna be straight up your computer technology. Like this is gonna be your understanding of how the web works. Oh, okay. Uh, so what's the roll again? 17. It's oh. 18, right? 17. 17. 17. I rolled a 16. Oh, okay. So you're going to need to beat a 17. I have riddles and puzzle solving as one of my creative. No. Um, it's, it, this is literally like a lore check. Oh, for okay. The, for, the, for the internet. So I'll let you use like a base skill because I think you have computers. I have VR creation, which can... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll give that to you. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you a plus three. Okay. <laughs> what you, so you got to beat it. You got to beat a seventeen. What if Elisa rolls a fourteen and it lands on seventeen? What then if it's tied? they hit the. Then then Lisa will have hit the DC check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll. 
Um, it's great. This is great. I love this. Did you roll a 14? Yeah. Oh, what? Hector has premonition. I was going to say, okay, so give me a second because I want to make perfect. damn sure. This is perfect. Um, Why is it perfect? Because Hector somewhat knows, but not the Someone person knows. I'm trying to hide it from. Yeah. This uh, is perfect. They have no reason to tell me. Shit. <laughs> I can't believe you could have done that. Wow. I love I'm completely you. Um, well, well done, Eliza. Holy shit. This is so narratively beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> left hand rolling. Oh, yeah. was that? You'll never my use your right hand again. They see me rolling. <laughs> That's the okay. All right. Um, give me one hate second. Love it, Not hate. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just want the to Luma make know what Lacey sure. And GM know, but Oya might have some idea of what Luma doesn't know that Lacey knows. <laughs> That's right, Amy. <laughs> we have, we have, we have secretly yeah. switched Oya's coffee with Folgers crystals. <laughs> Let's see what happens next. Cass has no idea. Okay. Uh, so what is this crap? What is this basura? Uh, <laughs> just give me one second. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is, Terry. as Gina said, narratively beautiful. <laughs> We haven't seen a role like this come down in several episodes. No, we have episodes. not. No, we have not. <laughs> I would watch this show. Exciting stuff. <laughs> you guys are cracking me. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> We're just a few years off from like ESPN style commenting, Why did commentating. I have it? On we we seriously RPG. need like the we like menu music. Yeah. And now for weather. The we you. <laughs> well, it's a. If you need a little day. segment, <laughs> it's lightning. Who knew? Back Who knew the storm was coming? <laughs> Ching, cha ching, <laughs> zing, zing, bang. Um, okay. Once again, to our viewers, Eliza made the DC check. <laughs> but did you see the weather? Meet or beat? Meet and, or beat? Uh, <laughs> she met it. She did. Mm -hmm. She did, Hector. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, goodness. shit. I had this bookmark. <laughs> I might. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, the real question is, okay, here we go. How happy is Sam? And um, I think the answer is very. <laughs> they are very excited, Hector. Absolute, very excited. Absolutely. As am I about the weather. <laughs> I mean, this this whole sequence really just combines the two things I love best: <laughs> success and also failure. And transatlantic Game. accents. And weather. Yeah. Yeah. Triple threat. <laughs> 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 It literally tells me that I mediate this. Oh. It does not say, the rule book says, if the attacker's final result is higher, the attack hits. If the defender's result is higher, the attack misses. There is no oh. actual official ruling oh. on a tie. Hang on, we're getting an official ruling coming in. It looks like it's gonna be Eric to mediate it. Mm. This is yeah. an unusual situation, Hector. It's very unusual things. indeed. Now, Just like the weather. <laughs> Sorry. Is it stop. still lightning over there? <laughs> yes. As, it can't I, stop. As a GM, uh -oh. I'm going to rule uh, in Sam's favor. Oh! oh! Did not see that coming. Wow. Whoa. I was anticipating like a events. mutual road kind of deal. Okay. And the reason being you really because Sam's about to get into trouble. Oh. We want the that trouble. Valid. Obviously. And as a GM... I'm gonna I'm gonna rule for the more dramatically appropriate choice here that I think is gonna add a lot of the flavor. But I will give you this, Oya. Um, you can't put your finger on it, but hacking Pyramid Star Solutions is gonna require more than the typical. It's gonna require more than what Lacey did when they went into. It's gonna require a lot more than what Lacey did when they went into the cameras. <sighs> And they were swooping through and getting all the data that they could from the convention center security cams. Um, Clearly. Now, you don't have an explanation as to why, but you seem to remember that um, you seem that your spidey senses tingle. There's going to be a lot more to this. But Lacey does seem like they're up for the task, and they've certainly pulled off. I mean, again, you watch them in game terms, you watch them crush a level nine difficulty roll, which as I described to you, it would be like, Lacey did what a team of NSA hackers would need a month to do in a few moments with their brain. So, maybe it's fine. Um, and there we are. 
So. Okay. So we doing this um, tonight? Uh, I guess. Uh, it's up to y'all. Feels a little soon. Uh, I mean, I'm up for it. I'm. I'm. I feel fine. Can we plan this at least? I if mean, we're here. Let's plan it right now. Do we know where the lab is? Oh. I mean, we would need a map of some kind, but right? Been there. Well, yeah, when I was like nine, ten years it, old. It seems like it's a, either a different lab or, yeah, we're not sure if it's the same lab. Mm. But we they've been to. Look at the power grid. Look at the power. grid. Anything that's power grid. this big, like part of this facility, even without the cooling systems, like they're drawing lots of power. Mm -hmm. That's a finite number of places. Yeah. But if I just shut the power off, can I do that? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I didn't mean Could to speak I? for you, but oh. that's a good idea. That's you were poking question. me. I think that's what you were trying no, to tell I me. No, I was. Oh. That's Lacey's a genius. Oh. You're a genius. Yes, we I can am not get. A genius. Mm. We've got a <gasps> natural biological blackout potentially that could give us whatever amount of time we could yes. get to break in the, right. the, the, the the us that are breaking in. Yeah. Hold up, though. I don't really know what I'm doing, though. I I could hurt people. Like, what if what if I over charge something and like cause like an electric fire or something like I I could burn the whole building to the ground it'll be 3 a.m. if that happens we'll get everybody up not to mention a building that um, you know high tech probably is gonna have a lot of backup generators yeah and yeah. if they evacuate the building all the better for us get everybody out right security <clears throat> and any other personnel that's there at 3 in the morning maybe I we guess. could test it uh, maybe later tonight mm. Uh, on some other building, you could kind of, you know, yeah, test you your practice. powers. It's gonna like pa make me power grid buildings all over the. Okay. We all gotta figure I mean, out I what guess we can do at some I understand. Point. Yeah, you're right. Practice you're right. makes perfect. And you're right. We can wait maybe yeah. until tomorrow night or the night after or something to. We need out. a plan. <laughs> practice all we can. In the background, Sorry, Cass literally Cass. just slumps down onto the table. Look, you got the easiest like... job. Smash <laughs> shit when we need you to smash it. I am ready. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay. Mm. And with Dr. Patel's card, with whatever that can do, that can help us get into the building, or at least access certain doors and stuff, as long as, again, we can hack the name to make it so that some other piece of information comes up. So we need to find that directory or database, like with employee names, probably on their website, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with employees that have level one clearance, which oh, is the yeah. top level. Are they just gonna have that on their website? Well, we could probably say like the vice, the VP of e VP, yes. VP. I'll Burning the midnight oil. while I'm in there. Okay. Okay, okay. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, I can do it. Maybe give me a picture of them so fun. I can um, yeah. start looking at their Yes. Case. Yeah. Okay. Just so in case anybody gets caught, yeah. you get caught, you can say, hell, I'm so-and-so. I work there, yeah. they're with me on a Really expensive night tour? Yeah. I can crawl through the ducks. I don't even have to be walking around in a hallway, per se. You wanna? Ooh, I should get a new outfit for this. I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of that, but sure, yeah. Shopping. I should get a new outfit for Shopping. this. Oh. Yeah, your mm. clothes didn't manage too well after the last extravaganza. So, all right, it's okay. I got some, I got some ideas. I'm gonna, I've been meaning to do this anyway, but if we're postponing this and not doing it tonight, if you guys can give me a day, I can go and fish something out of Cassium R and D. So, really? Yeah. Like what? I know about like a thing. Like germs? What? No, not germ. No, <laughs> that there was a, uh, a an application. I'm trying to remember the terminology. I didn't quite need to know this for my job, but at some point I would learn, have to learn it. But it was um, uh, 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 synth skin. Um, uh, 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 there's a, a, a oh, prototype. Yeah. Uh, a fluid synth skin uh, oh, is suit. that your booth? Yeah, yes, and there's a finished version of it, but I know for a fact there's a version that was not really helpful because it was a little bit earlier in the R&D, but uh, could be helpful for me. Anyway, give me some time to go and... Uh, it's pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the version I'm going to look at, it's something that never solidified the way that it needed to for its application, but... Like you. I, <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> the drawer that Lacey pulled the um, medicine out of, uh, while all that was going on, I uh, slipped a wad of cash in the drawer. That would have covered the cost of what that oh, medication oh. was, just so you guys know. So you're not like freaked out when you open it up and see. For the record, I in. told all of you that she insisted on paying for the funnel cake. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Earlier. That happened before. But I just wanted you, you didn't see that though. No, oh, I definitely did. But, and I will. you know, pay it for it. That guy was, seemed like a nice fella. I know yeah. Hops, even if I had offered to pay back for the funnel cake, she wouldn't have accepted it. 
Usually that's and a I warned but... you all about Elliot's oh, beer. I could... Never no, buy no, no. Elliot's beer again. Narratively, that's fun. <laughs> Only the narratively, that's a lot of fun. I mean, I think I could make it happen anyway. I have like movement and. Sam, are you cool? I'm with that? fast. Oh, I'm I'm super distracted. I'm thinking about all sorts that's of other things. That's what I figured too. I 100 That's exactly why I did it right then too. Cause... You're good. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, Lacey what was, has what was the name of the thinking of cake all of the security Elliot. components. Elliot. 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 I have to start. I've been writing it down. Shit. Thank mm. you. Don't drink Elliot. Did you forget about Elliot? No, I didn't forget about Elliot. Elliot but I didn't think I got guy. his name. By the way, Elliot, the funnel cake guy, is kind of making his rounds down by Raft City at this point. He's getting a lot of business down there. Not a lot of funnel cakes that side of town. Morning cake. Um, okay, so what we we what do it doing? tomorrow? Uh, so we're I'm we prep tonight. To lay out the prep. Mm -hmm. uh, we're practicing the things that we need. I guess we I'll go. Like, I like how there's a fake vault in Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, practicing. Um, we're can doing I, that. Can I be in charge of like so? Yeah, like in Ocean's mm -hmm. Eleven and all those spy movies and stuff. There's someone who like creates a dossier. Yeah. Um, can I do that? Like, I can do that. <coughs> yeah. What if you could yeah. get blueprints for, for, of Pyramid for. Star yeah. and make a digital map? Yeah, yeah. I'll find mm. all the info that I can. Cass can help me, like, just do a bunch of research yeah. and put it all together in a nice little presentation. Mm. I'll help Hops uh, yeah. test Destroy on buildings. No, <laughs> we'll go find an abandoned warehouse. There's got to be some around all here, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lacey, Luma, do you guys know any of the area? A place where Hops and I can go to, to oh. test out draining power without... Setting fires. Oh. Um. Draining power, yes. Setting fires is more likely with bad insulation, but um, I think there there are a couple of places. This is this is an industrial area. Uh, it definitely won't have people in it if it burns down. Cool. Great. Not at this hour, anyway. Okay. I'll get you the blueprint so you can start the the VR uh, practice. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, let's go. Uh, collaboration. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's go take out some lights, I guess. So yeah. I'm going to say front door. if you are going to put together these dossiers and these forgeries, um, I'm going to recommend you spend XP for short term and medium term benefits, okay. which will mm -hmm. simply give you what you're looking for. Great. You will simply have these forged documents <coughs> to be able to put together. It is. A deep dive. Um, your instincts were completely correct, Oya. They are not visible or readily available. Um, the the higher level clearance, uh, high level clearance people. That was you. That's oh, is that you? Yeah. Level yeah. one um, is there's no. Yeah, yeah you're not finding any of that stuff face. anywhere. I was you're, like, maybe it's the VPs. You're digging into the directory, and um, even the ones that are listed as even the. You begin to realize, Oya, that as you're going through some of the directories, as uh, Lacey has managed to sort of open the door for this. Um, what you're discovering is, is a lot of the people that, that, that have level one clearance, you're only, you're having to make leaps in logic mm. to be like, oh, this person probably has level one clearance and it's not being advertised on their profiles. And it just kind of mm. goes down the look. What's up? You look like you desperately want to say something, Bonnie. Huh, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I just thought, so, so my father, I doubt had level one clearance. In fact, he, he probably didn't have like yeah. any type of clearance like that. But I do have some old, uh, some of his old boxes and files in a closet that might have like old blueprints or something in the, hmm. in the thing. Okay. I don't know. If that's probably you. You uh, papered blueprints of the interior of the building are probably almost non-existent. Mm. Uh, oh, well, maybe old files, data might, files. They like might data be pads. available in the city hall, oh. but they've mm. probably been claimed by the oh. corporation. Well, I have boxes um, of some of his crap <laughs> for future <laughs> reference. <laughs> you do have boxes of your dad's crap, which he did have associations with Pyramid Star. Yeah. But he definitely didn't have level and clearance, as far as I know. So what are we doing? Yeah. Any luck with those uh, profiles? Yeah. What's the time frame? Are we trying to get this done by tomorrow, or mm -hmm. what's... Yeah, okay. we want to move like as fast as we yeah. can. Yeah, so I'd like to spend XP to get okay. the dossiers ready. Um, so XP in this manner can be spent to do things that are pretty cool, like two XP can make something like this happen, no problem. Um, I might actually say that this would be a short-term benefit. Um, right, because it's just for the one run. Yeah. Um, short-term benefits usually do things like grant you skills that you didn't normally have. Medium-term benefits can sort of start paying around. Um, in this case, just because I want to start playing with the mechanic, um, I'm going to go ahead and just say two XP 
to make this a true part of the narrative. Usually that's sort of a long-term benefit that you can do for things like if you burn three XP, you can say, I have an apartment downtown. Mm. And, or you could spend three XP and be like, just so happens, I know somebody in city hall, so I know how to get us in. Burn three XP and it's true. Mm -hmm. Um, Things like that. In this case, I'll let you spend two XP to say that you create pretty convincing forgeries of these higher level um, people. You do get one of them in particular, which you were able to, I would say at a high percentile, assume that they are, uh, I would say there's a very strong chance that they are level one clearance Mm -hmm. based off of everything you're able to extrapolate. Um, And you're able to get some information on them. Uh, It's enough for uh, Luma to take a look at it and get a good idea of who they are. And um, you're even able to pull some video well, of a yeah, lecture. I was say, yeah, once great. I get names, I would just yep. go to their social medias because I'm. If there's retinal yeah. scans, no I'm social media. Cl- These, oh, they don't. What know. you've noticed is everyone who's classified at level mm. one or mm. could be level one. One of the giveaways oh. is none of them have a social media presence. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Yeah. You Give me that. the. Best resolution. There are of their lectures. Face you can. Lectures. You can find lectures that they've Ooh. done at universities earlier in their okay. career, and every now and then you can find like talks that they've done to other Pyramid Star staff. And I'm gonna be that's studying gonna be in your, them. Okay. That's gonna and be also, in your file, yeah. if there's any way that I can get close up of eyeballs so that I can get their eyeballs right for retinal Well, thankfully scans. we're living in the age of super mega high definition. Great. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to actually keep track of the the details. Um, while this is all happening and you're prepping for your deep dive, um, you two are headed to a warehouse. Yeah. Um, so near near the area in the parking lot where you've parked your unnamed <laughs> hover jet. Um, Does it have a name yet? Oh, Amelia? Amelia. Amelia. Okay, so Amelia's parked um, in the parking lot. We took the hover jet? Hover jet is no, we didn't hover know. We're just going near to where it's parked. Yeah, the parking lot, I know. It, it, what cracks me up is this oh. hover jet is just parked in broad daylight in this parking lot. And again, no one seems to go near this thing. People have just kind of accepted it as part of the landscape. Do we at least put like a Star Wars tarp over it? Uh, yeah, uh, we should cover it or something. Like make it look build like build a hangar. So construction. To give you guys an idea, this thing is. Uh, this thing would might fit in the GNS studio. Mm-hmm. It a tarp is, makes it wor- look worth stealing. No tarp makes it look too scary to go near. Mm. Um, yeah, the, the big tarp, I mean, it's a drop ship. It, it, it definitely can hold, let me put it this way, the cargo hold in the back where you guys have been running and jumping in and out of the, it can hold a tank. Probably only wow. one, but it can hold a tank. Wow, great. Does that make you happy? This. Does that should, make you happy, Sam? We should move this at some point. <laughs> We're just saying. It's not that hard to find eventually, and it's been a few days. <laughs> And they know one of them is missing. So we're doing like the street cleaning thing where you move it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. So we're doing the street cleaning. Just thing. Right, not a drop ship on the side. <laughs> Bam. So yeah. No. Just What's leave up? me in there. It's not the drop ship you're yeah. looking for. Yeah. I'm glad they're street it's cleaning. It's a pop-up bar. <laughs> no? So a hundred years in the future. Graffiti, I'm glad so it looks abandoned. There's still street cleaning. If it's graffiti, graffiti in LA. then it's fair game. People Anyone can like can take co- it. you can yeah. come in. It's basically like come inside. Yeah. This is property of this local, yeah, okay. bad. I, really want to put I thought about it, but not yet. <laughs> um, late at night, you guys are able to find one of the many, uh, there's, there's areas on the coastline here in LA, particularly near Santa Atlantis, where a lot of the buildings are really unsafe and have just not been dealt with since the receding of the, of the floodwaters. But do they still have power? Um, not That's a lot a of, no, they don't like, have power. Yeah, so. If uh, you're looking for like an abandoned warehouse, to, like, drink. They're, they're really tough to find out here yeah. on the edge. Um, a lot of the buildings that are around Santa Atlantis are still habitable. Um, they've still, some of them have sustained structural damage and just the city never really did anything about them, but they're still standing and still sturdy. Um, and well, how about this? How about a building that doesn't have power? Could we artificially power juice it, it with power? One way to find and out. And practice taking it away without yeah. Destroying the integrity of the... There's one way to find out. All right, so let's, uh, we'll cut to a scene of you guys. We'll say, for funsies, we'll say that you guys did, in fact, discover a building um, pretty close to the water line. Look, that's perfect. There's no <laughs> power, Anton. Like, I'm supposed to take power away from a building that has no power. You um, can't build anything. You give it power. So... The inside, the inside of this building, as y'all walk inside, it looks like a hollowed out, uh, probably a storage facility, 
way back in the day. Um, a lot of it, it, this building is definitely a relic of old LA, as a lot of the interior is red brick and somehow is miraculously still standing. Um, the inside is filled with metal catwalks, and it looks like there are dangling light fixtures from this. This is a big enough place where they probably stored cars. It's in what was an old warehouse district long time ago. If I like fill the walls, can I feel like the, the wiring is still like intact or? Um, you place your hand along the wall. Mm -hmm. Maybe do like a little bit of a. You can feel there's conductive material, okay. but you're not feeling any electricity. Um, but uh, just touching the sides, you can feel that in this old building, um, I will say this, you are detecting, like you're getting the feeling that there, the conductive material on the inside of this wall is probably not wiring, it actually might be metal. Okay. 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 Juice it up, you've got this. I don't know how to juice it up. Like, what do I do? Do I just like touch the wall? Do I Puffs. touch a light? Puffs. I, there's no manual for Puffs. this, Anton, what? Nobody can answer that question except for you. Okay, well maybe you should step outside or something just in case there's a lot of metal in here. Like, what no. if what if like you get zapped or something? I trust you. That's a horrible idea, yeah, Ant. This is the part of the test. Ugh. I'm gonna stand in the middle of this big room. I stretch out my hands and like touch, okay. it, you know, and then bring them back. I'm gonna stand right here, okay? Hops, you've got this. Okay, at least wear my boots. No, Put on no. my galoshes. I'm not putting on your galoshes. Just don't kill me. Just focus your oh. power and do this. <laughs> Okay, just give it a little okay. bit of juice. Okay. Light okay. it up. Light Anton it up. Anton likes living on the edge. <sighs> um, All right. There's no sockets or anything, is there? Like, is there sockets? Yeah, it's just um, a couple of rats sockets. scurrying into the dark. Um, so you, I can find like a hole in the wall. There, you, there would definitely be sockets, but I mean, they are the they are the sockets that like looks like they've been removed a long time ago. Yeah. But there's holes in the wall where I can like, mm -hmm. touch an yeah, open wire. Try not to fry any of the rats. You'd, You'd have to stick your hand into the walls. Gross. Okay. Um, I hate you. Okay, so you this kind is of a stupid idea. You get down low, uh, and you look into this into the brick, <sighs> and it, you're you're pretty sure you're hearing what must be a very in-depth conversation between what has to be maybe 10 rats. There's a lot of poop in here, Anton. What? There's um, poop. There's, I'm gonna fry a bunch of rats in there. What kind of power do you have? <laughs> All I'm saying is we're gonna have barbecue shish kebab ratatouille Hops. in the wall. Hops. If I... Hops. What? Breathe. Focus. This is not a good idea. Just repeat your mantra. I don't have a mantra. You don't have a mantra? What the hell is a mantra? <laughs> just, okay, just close your eyes and think of a word. It can be gibberish, it can be an actual word. Okay. Try not to associate a lot of meaning to it, okay? Okay. And just constantly repeat it. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Marshmallow. Marshmallow, great. Just keep saying marshmallow. 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 This is so stupid. Okay, no, this not. is even dumber. Hey. Are you sticking what? your hand in there? Yeah, but right. saying my marshmallow man mantra. Um, mantra. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you stick your hand into the rat hole. Um, if I get eaten by rats, so I'm gonna come and haunt pops, you. Pops, if you don't focus, you could end up killing somebody. Yeah, you don't think I don't know that, Anton? Are why you, do you think I want this taken out? So, hey, I need to ask you this straight Sorry. up. While this argument's happening, are you sticking your hand in the yeah. hole and gripping stuff? Yep. Okay, so. <laughs> and I'm pissed. So. Inevitably, rats are gonna bite you. However, when you reach inside, Ow! I'm just saying, you've cornered rats inside of a hole. When you stick your arm in there, rats will absolutely bite you. <laughs> but when you stick your hand in there and grip the wire, yep. you immediately feel a conductor. <laughs> Sorry, rats. <laughs> and I turn it, I, I power up. The whole place. Sparks explode out of the lighting fixtures. None of them light up, but oh. you see sparks just rain down. And Anton, you hear the <laughs> as this whole place has an electrical current flowing through it right now. Um, and if I let go, will it continue? Uh, you let go. <laughs> Crap. How am I supposed to practice draining power when I am the power? Hops. And then the Look. smell starts to hit you. 
like a burning smell. Like a burning smell. Like a dead rat. Smell. Like dead rats. And look at my hand. Like I'm gonna get infected. No bites. Oh, they never die. mind. And about the same time you reached in there and grabbed it, felt the conductor and activated it. The it was kind of they, right. If it makes you feel any better, there was probably no pain. They probably died rather fast. Well, I feel like shit. Hmm. Thanks a lot. I just killed a bunch of rats. This did nothing. All I, I can power a building. Hops. I don't know how to take power Hops. away. What? Hops. What's your mantra? Marshmallow. I don't even no, know. No, that. that's not what it is. Oh. Your mantra is marshmallow, 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 marshmallow. Okay. Marshmallow, marshmallow. Marshmallow. It just sounds even dumber when you say it, Antoine. You weren't focused. Marshmallow. And 30 seconds ago, did you think you could do what you just did? No. And now you're telling me that you couldn't do something else. Well, 30 seconds ago, you okay, didn't think Okay, fine. You if it'll make that. you shut up, I'll do it again. And I just put my hand in there. Marshmallow. Marshmallow. <laughs> All right, so the irritation brewing inside of you. Um, yes, you managed to channel electricity. And once again, the whole place... <laughs> Um, no sparks this time flying out, uh, as most of the wires have just basically been woken up, but um, you feel that the electricity in this place... Um, Anton, uh, make a perception check. Oh, um, What's the difficulty? The difficulty here is going to be two. All right. So it's an intellect roll. Okay. I have an edge. Uh, okay, so if you wanted to burn, so an edge in intellect means that if you wanted to uh, burn a few points out of your intellect pool, mm -hmm. it would just cost you one less to gain an effort. Uh, so normally it's three points, but you have an edge, so it's two points. If you wanted to do that, if you wanted to lower the difficulty by spending effort, you don't you have said to. you have contacts? Yeah. Those are an asset on perception. Yep. If you've got the contacts, those, that counts those as an asset. That automatically drops the difficulty by one. Well, then I'll just go with contacts. All right, cool. So, so the difficulty is not one, two. so I have to roll above a three. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, right? that's correct. Three. So you I, get? Rolled, I rolled a 13. Okay. Um, as you're standing in there, um, <laughs> she sticks her arm in there and she is complaining. And you, you feel, you can hear the hum of electricity begin to surge through the building. It, it's also worth noting that you two are starting to become very well of a, a horrible stench that is starting to build in this area. Um, at about the same moment, Anton, you look across uh, outside these fogged windows, much like our set, but as you kind of look outside the fogged windows, you see um, about 70 feet away at the building next door, all of the lights turn on. Hops. <gasps> mm. And the alleyway that connects the building to the next building lights up. Hops. Marshmallow, <laughs> marshmallow, marshmallow. Hops. What, what, I'm just practicing my mantra. Hops, look my outside. Um, through the fog of this yellowed, uh, m most of the window is broken, but through the fog of the yellowed panes that are still intact, you can see that the building next door, it, every light has activated. Um, one of them blows out. Popping Wait. sound as a bulb explodes. Did those just turn on? Like, how they, they... You did that. Yeah, you did that. Whoa. Okay. A marshmallow. How do I turn <sighs> it off? What do I do? Do I try to just let go? But I don't know... Hops. Okay. You're the expert here. So just go with it. Okay, an expert of three days. Great. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um maybe if I just like suck it back in or something? I don't know. Maybe a mantra would help. Maybe like if you shout electricity off or something. <laughs> marshmallow seem to work. Fly web. There you go, then say marshmallow, yeah. Uh, okay. Marshmallow. So, what exactly are you trying to do? Uh, okay, so and so, so I've obviously been powering up the buildings. Uh -huh. Now I'm, I'm, I want to, um, I'm holding on to the same wire, but instead of uh, pushing electricity in, I want to suck it back into me. Um, you're not really able to reverse the flow of the energy, oh. but you are able to cut it off. Oh. Um, it looks like it's gonna have to follow the laws of. <laughs> You're not sure how you did what you did at the at the tower. Um, I would no. say what you probably need to do is make a roll. Okay. So it's the same ability as it was that first time. So you're gonna roll your shock ability. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty for this, considering what you're trying to do across the street to the building, I'm just gonna set it at three so it's demanding, so you need to roll nine or better. All right, with shock I get a minus one difficulty. Okay, so it'll drop down to two. Standard, you need six or better. Okay. Show me what you got. I'm just gonna go for it. Okay. 15. Okay. 
Um, so you're trying to focus on exactly what mm -hmm. you did, because as you attempt this, you're like, uh, try to draw the electricity back into your body, but for a second, you're like, it's not working. You don't notice anything change. Mm -hmm. You cut off the energy and you see the power. Go out. And you hear somebody in the distance go, what the hell? Um, <laughs> and then you <laughs> activate it again. Yeah. And the whole, again, the neighborhood lights up. Um, you stare at it for a second. Um, and it occurs to you that at the time this was happening, you were gripping this thing with two hands you were connected to the ground. You're just going through your mind of all the ways that you were able to reverse that flow of energy and to send that back into you. And you begin to realize, uh, hops that you might actually be able to make yourself a living conductor as opposed to just a thing that transfers energy from one place to another. You actually might be able to, let me put it more specifically. It's entirely possible hops that what you were doing was becoming a human battery when that was happening. Okay. Now, you don't know how long you can store the energy, but that might be the way to do it, is to drain it and to store it into yourself. It okay. might be a way to do it. But if there's a continuous power flow, right. it's going to have the same effect that you had at the tower, which means you're just going to light up like a Christmas tree. And there is no power flow in here. I am the power flow. You are the power flow right so now. And the other building looks here, right? like, just by the way the fact that all the lights turn on, is it might actually be a... a it actually might be connected to the grid. Oops. This one? No. no the building the next door. If this one's connected to the grid, you don't know. But you're not feeling any electricity coming from this one in particular. So I should go try and drain the building next door? Possibly. That sucks. Okay, Pops, isn't it? Why did you say oops? <laughs> uh, okay, so I don't really think I can drain any electricity from this building because I am the electricity. Get it? Sure, like, yeah. There's nothing to drain. It's all coming from me anyway. Right. I don't know how the hell that happened over there, but it does have power, and maybe I can drain that. But are people living in there? People We're going to get to that. So the Crap. two of you are going to spend... We should probably go. <laughs> the two of you are spending time... Basically, basically what's happening <clears throat> is the two of you are spending time trying to figure out exactly the extent of what hops can do with this electrical currents. Yeah. Um, the rest of you... Um, Marshmallow. What? Just give me a quick. Just give me a quick summary of what Cass is doing, pacing back and forth Hoping and cracking your knuckles. Hoping with graphic design somehow, which I assume means Research. bringing lots yeah. of coffee. Yeah. So yes. you two <laughs> back here. Yeah. You two. So the, basically, where we're going to leave off tonight is that everyone in this garage is setting up to put together the dossiers, bringing coffee, talking about you know what's happening next, and off in the corner. While all of this is happening, is Lacey. And Lacey, you're staring into what you see to perceive as the edges. Um, the login screens and what is underneath what is happening in the web, you know, for you, it manifests almost visually um, like a precipice. And below, wading into a line, it was just an ocean of code, is the dark web where you are going to have to go in order to hack Pyramid Star, mm. where the dangers are very, very real, and your brain will be accessible to be hacked as well as any computer system. Staring into that abyss for a second, and you can hear your friends in the background kind of cheerfully getting excited <laughs> about how good the role is going. I'm just pacing back and um, forth with someone else's voice, practicing. None of them are aware that right now you're looking into what will be one of the most dangerous hacks you've ever done. You know the stories, you know what's at stake, you know what can happen to you permanently if things go wrong. And that is where we're going to have to leave off for the night. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> no, I don't want you to get hacked. <laughs> yeah. Going into the deep. Marshmallow. <laughs> Marshmallow. Uh, really good game, guys. Whole s'mores. This is a really uh, RP heavy session. I just session. want to applaud that. Yeah. yeah. That was lovely. Both um, of you. Are you kidding? That was beautiful.
you don't. It's know. a good RP heavy session for especially oh. because of what y'all have planned is next. I mean, essentially, let's be honest. Y'all just y'all are planning a heist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's let's be honest. Y'all are doing what? y'all are fucking planning a heist. We're not let's let's go go You're talking about breaking <laughs> into one of the most technologically <laughs> advanced headquarters of the corporate LA structure and stealing information right under the nose of their top operator. We got six. That's probably enough, right? Do you think we need one more? What's that? You think we need one more? One more? Six? One more right, we'll what? get one more. Oh, okay. okay. One more what? Yeah, Let's go seven. <laughs> Let's go seven. Next week? Uh, yeah. We'll bring yeah. the sweet baby. So, Danny Ocean. Yeah, sweet baby, yeah. Uh, so uh, that'll be it for us for tonight, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us for this little pre-tape session. Uh, if I'm still in chat, <laughs> it's so yeah. meta. It's so meta. If I'm still in chat, go the hell to bed, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get off the internet, go to man. Bed. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight for another episode of Callisto 6. We see you back in Los Angeles 2119 next Friday night at 4 p.m. Until then, stay whimsical. <laughs> <laughs>